que isto está António Castro ali. Ok, então, olá a todos, boa tarde. Hello everyone at home, or over there. Uh, uh, vamos conduzir isto em inglês, so we'll, we'll drive this uh, workshop in English. Uh, qualquer pergunta que tenham, façam em português, falamos em português, we'll uh, switch between languages. So, first of all, thank you for attending, the few of you who are here in, the, in a very cold room, in an even colder room than, than uh, I was expecting. But um, the idea is for something to happen with my font. And uh, yeah, okay. Uh, let's just hide it. Claro que não podia funcionar bem à primeira, não é? Something, Murphy always attacks. Sim. Processing quadro. Um, okay, so uh, let's just do a quick introduction, a bit of marketing. I always do something like this for you to, to, to see. So welcome to the Processing Community Day workshop warm-up. So this is part of a, a larger initiative that's taking part in the 14th. Portanto, espero-vos a todos no dia 14, especialmente os alunos de design, artes plásticas, multimédia e desenho. Um, and we'll have several other workshops. A bit of me, I'm a professor here in, in school. My interests are very varied. Uh, usually I, I ground my interest on typography. I'm a member of the I2ADS, the research unit that's supporting these initiatives. And why I'm, tell, I'm telling you this, because usually I, I use that type, type, typography. Ah, pera lá, estás a ver isto? Estás a ver isto em modo assim, ok. O que é que estavas a ver? Estavas a ver o grande? Ok. Ok. Sorry. Um, usually I ground my interest uh, in, uh, in uh, type, typography, and I usually use uh, typography to, to, to do programming, to do lettering, to do drawing. And uh, usually I've been showing some other cases uh, in previous workshops. It was getting boring, especially for people who, uh, like Roberto Padilla, who has, has been attending workshops. So I decided to show some new examples. Uh, so using typography to generate letter forms and pass them on to glyphs, or for example, doing uh, a circle packing alg algorithm to generate an album cover for a friend. So usually I, I don't do commercial work. I usually work for friends. That's a, a thing I do, I, or I don't do. And, or for example, this for, was for an exhibition um, for Professor Mendoza, in, probably in 2009. He invited us to do several illustrations and I decided to do a generative illustration where I had particles. Each thing represented a thing in Porto. I took a picture, I, did, I scanned it and, and I traced it. And there's only one Tower of Clerigus over here. There's only one Tower of Clerigus in 40,000 illustrations. So the, all these particles that are going on over here were trying to figure out a way to self-organize and to magnetically connect to a center and anchor that would write the word Porto. The, the only commission, the commission only said it had to have the word Porto. So I wrote Porto and I said, okay, go, uh, you, you feel yourself attracted to, to the black dots that say Porto and they went there. So it's a self-organizing system. And well, there's only one, uh, there's only one symbol of the city and there's only one tower of clerics and one uh, cathedral. The rest of it uh, are lots of them. And, and this was the last one. This was not done in processing. This is kind of secret, but I, I think I can, I guess I can show it to you. This is done in Drawbot. It's a Python application, but it, it shares the same values. This was done for, for uh, Professor uh, Eduardo Aich. He's doing a, a brand concept book. So he asked me, obrigado, Antonio, obrigado, lá. He asked me to, to, he wanted to do a pattern. He wanted to do a Japanese binding uh, in the interior of the pages to, to have a pattern. So actually that's dummy image is fake. Um, so the pages would fold and you have a pattern with the brand identity typeface um, that supported the Lumia as a brand. Um, all the variants of the typeface over there. So yeah, coded the script and yeah, I placed the script exporting uh, 300 pages and it took like two minutes to export. So, and yeah, well, this is kind of the example of it. So I'm telling you this to, 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 to give you some example uh, of things 
we can do and we can play. And I know one person over here, and this is, I gotta say, I'll put in Kupas for Zoom. If, if this is the time where I ask you in Zoom to, to leave, leave, leave a comment, I can go here. Um, I I'd love for you to just say where you come from. Uh, I, I have no idea how I go back to Zoom. Max Voltas in our Zoom. Olha, não sei voltar ao Zoom. Como? Ok, ok. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is the part of the, the workshop where I ask people here in the room um, if you can. I only know one person. Uh, and I can I ask you guys in the chat just to drop your name, where you're from, and what are your interests. And I don't know, maybe we can start having like five minutes conversation. Sophia? Uh, é, português, inglês, como português? Não? Ok. Não, vir, vir, vai puxar. Vai. Ok. Eu, curiosidade, veste picada para o workshop, era de borda. Ok. Assim, temos um, we have Laura, who is also here. Laura, daí o ponto a pé de saída. Roberto is saying, I'm a visual artist from Buenos Aires, Buenos Aires, perfect. It must be earlier over there. And it should be warmer than here right now, right? <laughs> nice. Uh, Nelson Vassalo can't hear her. Ah, sorry. Ah, sou eu que estou com um, ok. Desculpa, tu me dás o som para a câmera ou o Ok, so Sofia is a student from here, from design. E mais, mais gente aqui. Estas meninas que chegaram são de... Quando é que tiveste laboratório de imagens? Foi quando Ok. Sibel, disseste Sibel? Sibel. Sibel, ok. You should have been my student. Ok, but you, you have classes with Rodrigo and you didn't finish and you're taking the class this year. E aí, okay. foi ano passado. E aí, eu tenho uma matéria, só que eu tenho que acontecer ao melhor matéria. Ok, foi. Não, é isso, é um kickstart. Ok, vamos fazer o botão. Tenho que ter o Rodrigo. Eu tenho o Rodrigo que está aqui. Eu não posso falar. E. Meu nome é Milena. Milena. Eu também fiz uma laboratória, mas eu não sei o que aconteceu com vocês. Mas o que aconteceu com vocês? Foi uma transição? Vocês estavam ainda vivendo aqui em Portugal? Sim, sim. Nós estamos aqui, estamos no terceiro ano. In yeah, it, it was just the overwhelming uh, faculty of the university. Yeah, yeah. We also work, so it's it was too much. Okay, I will take it this year. Thank you. Okay. I'm from Brazil, but I've been in here for years. Okay. Right now, I'm at the master's in multimedia. Ah, we're here. In film. It's still in film, it's like I'm trying to think. Uh, I had I had a bit of experience with P5. Okay, P5 yes. Yeah. Uh, Makes sense. And I also like graphic design. So. Okay, perfect. Okay, maybe it will be introduction level. Maybe you can ask things that if I know because I'm not a programmer, okay, not a coder. But okay, well, and uh, glad to hear people from the multimedia master also paying attention to. E I'm I already heard about the first and I was curious and I like what you told me about like how you can generate there's a really cool thing if you like it's called basal processing right now in the actually pretty cool I encourage you to go after it afterwards basil basil like the sweet slam so we have more things. And uh, here, hey, a lot of people. Nelson from Lisbon, graphic design, topography and creative computation general. Uh, work remotely as a manager. Nelson, you're a unicorn. Where's Nelson? Okay, perfect. <laughs> I'll do that. Uh, 
Edith from Germany, data viz designer and researcher. Edith, actually, we had the, the, the p5.js workshop. It was maybe better for this, but it's high. Maybe, but I, I hope you can take something out of it. I'll, I'll play with some cool advanced functions. Uh, well, advanced, advanced in a, in a beginner level functions. Maybe you can take something out of it. So Klaus Birk, uh, thanks for the intro. Here's Klaus, designer indicator from South Germany. Perfect. Uh, two, two persons from Germany. Similar focus on typography, generative design, digital design, looking forward. Perfect. Uh, and we're not doing typography, but maybe we'll have the, the, we take the groundwork for type type design. Pedro from Braga. Where's Pedro? Uh, okay, let's see him. A master degree in media arts. Oh, from media arts. Okay, perfect. I've, I have a friend who's running the media arts program. So great to see you here, Pedro. Fernando, not, not the first time. Obrigado, Fernando, for being here. Mais uma vez. Uh, remotely in SEO and I've been interested in creative coding. Thank you for being here. Uh, SEO, Fernando, it's a magic thing for me. It's like electricity. I have no clue what to do with it. Uh, hello, everyone. Communication design from Portugal. Laura, from Portugal, in the middle of the ocean. Olá, Laura. <laughs> ah, Taliana <laughs> também. Uh, okay, so uh, Fotini, visual artist from Greece. Greece, perfect. Uh, interested in creative coding. Thank you for being here. Nelson, it's a struggle, takes time. Yeah, sure. It's like two chips uh, uh, competing with each other in the brain. And Mariana, designer, doing my master's degree in image design. Perfect. Where is Mariana? Where is Mariana? Aqui, Mariana. Hello, Mariana. Ah, bem-vinda. <laughs> um, uh, Pedro Rito from Coimbra, processing indicator. Oh, okay, Pedro. I will fazer aqui umas. Maybe if I say something wrong, please correct me because I'm not a programmer. Um, a Tavia Severo, ei, meu, já foi uns anos, Pedro. Altamente. <laughs> Boa. Ingrid. Oh, come on. No way. Ingrid? From Barcelona? No way you're here. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, hi, how are you? <laughs> Hi. I'm, you're, you're, hi. You're doing a preview of what we're doing, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. That's so nice to see you. <laughs> Good. So we have a few people home. We have a few people here. So it's a really nice crowd. So let's go on with the, with the, with this. So if you don't know us, for people who don't know us, this is Porto, Portugal, west coast of Europe. A uh, bit of marketing and branding. If my slides open, this is what this, our city looks like from taken from a cool photographer. This is actually taken from Gaia. And a bit of marketing from our school. Our school is pretty big. It's medium size for a fine arts school. We have four bachelor programs. Five specialization or postgrad courses, especially interaction web design that will probably soon be, become a master. And illustration who has already become a master in illustration this year. If you want to do illustration, please apply. We have 10 master programs and I highlight the communication design and media. So we have several representatives of, of here already. And we have five PhD programs, especially one in um, design, uh, a joint venture with Aveiro. So our ecosystem is very large. We go all the way up north to Barcelos, who have a connection to the research unit uh, in Barcelos and down south in Aveiro. And our main research unit in the arts is based here. So this is our school. This was our previous buildings from the people of the arts. I really like this image because it's like the old and the new. We're here on the building on the left, on the top, on the corner. If it's the, the left corner, maybe you could say hi down there, but it's not live, okay. And this is, we do stuff, we do lettering, uh, typography, we do design, we do printing, we do calligraphy, and this is the workshop. Maybe Sophie is here somewhere, or maybe not. Um, and of course, this has become a tradition doing the Processing Community Day workshop. Uh, this has been a workshop done with uh, Joan Rodrigues uh, in 2019. And this is, has been all hosted by our research unit I2ADS. So we've been doing this since 2019 with uh, guest speakers like João Martin Moura, Pinozal Machado, Carsten Schmidt. You maybe you recognize a picture down here, this, this room. And this year we'll have Ana Carreras um, joining us. So please join us on the 14th. So finally, we'll start the workshop. Uh, so we'll do just a, a bit of visual references. These were actually taken from the last year workshop, but it's okay. And we'll start drawing immediately. I'm try I will try to go faster this time. I will pack a lot of information, but just stop me or signal Antonio, who is running the Zoom. Uh, we haven't presented Antonio Castro, who's running the Zoom, my colleague here today. Um, 
just signal him or just open your mic and speak because I'm, I'm with the headphone and I can hear you. And uh, we'll go through all of this. And we have time. If we have time, we'll try to do recursiveness. I'm not sure we're going to do recursiveness. Um, taking my notes. Uh, so the, 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 if we receive the link. So the, the, the slides will be here and the workshop material will be here. And let's start with this. So what's a true chetal? True chetal, uh, Sebastian Touche was a priest from the, 18, uh, from the 18th century, and he devised a system of modular tiling. So the first thing uh, we have to do uh, is to understand what a tile is. So a tile is something that is drawn on a, a repeated basis. So this is pretty obvious. Porto is pretty famous for tiles. So you do a lot of tiles, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then you go again, one, two, three, four, five, six, or you go downwards, one, two, three, four, five, six. So you actually draw, for people who have already had contact with drawing in computers, you probably already, you guess already what's happening here. You're doing things repeatedly. So tiles are systems of doing units repeatedly. So, but the units itself themselves may have more than one drawing. The issue is, that if you want to do something like, I don't know, something like this, and you point it, then when you connect it, maybe it should connect. You have to establish connection zones. That's what uh, Sebastian Truche did, and he did a system of mathematically uh, doing repetitions and creating patterns by mirroring stuff like one row would be to the left, one row would be to the right, and eventually it would generate patterns. So this is the cool stuff. You can actually go on the slides and see more information. Uh, and we'll try, if we have time, to, to do the, the multi-resolution patterns. Uh, that means that one pattern can have the big thing, but if you have connection points, enough connection points, you can actually do two patterns or four in this case, inside one unit. So this is what we'll try to, we'll aim to do today. Uh, I don't know if it's going to go well, but we'll try. Um, but the idea is this, you can actually insert more detail inside each tile. Uh, so this is what I was telling you. So you, you put a tile and then inside this tile is pointing upwards and then you put another tile, this tile may be pointing upwards or it may be rotative. And that's what we're, going to do so this this will uh, require a slight change of uh, change uh, changing the way you think about how you draw if you if you did already 3d graphics maybe you know so the 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 going down the rabbit hole of this concept and uh, going down the rabbit hole of this concept so we'll like this this uh, schema is doing usually we're and you're going to see that processing does this, but we'll go slowly. I'm just going to explain what we're going to do. Usually when you draw, when you pick up a piece of paper, you start drawing from here and you go, oh, I'm going to go 10 centimeters high and you draw a ball, I don't know. But actually processing doesn't do this. Processing uses the screen as a canvas. So it takes the zero from here, like in Adobe applications, like Illustrator, InDesign, Photoshop, the zero is over here. So you, when you go to the right, you go plus 100, and then you go down and you plus 150, for example, and you draw. So this will be plus. So we are used to drawing from the corners, from the beginning. But I'm going to challenge you not to draw from the corners, but actually to draw like we do in 3D, to draw from a, a virtual center. So starting from somewhere, like in the universe, we don't know where we are. We're somewhere in the universe, in the Milky Way. From, from the center, we go left and we go, for example, plus 10. And then we go, sorry, we'll go right, plus 10. And then we go left, minus 10. And then we have an absolute distance of 20. So this is what this is doing, okay? So we'll be drawing with uh, relative drawing. So relative to the center, I'm going to the left, going to the right. And this will give me an absolute measurement. And, and this is for the people who, don't, who hate mathematics like I do. I flunk at mathematics, okay? But if I, if I flunked and I learned this, you can also learn it, okay? Uh, 
So let's do it like, uh, like this. We're going to use a concept that's called a normalized drawing. So a drawing that's done in between zero and one. So if you think zero and one, hmm, let's think about zero and one for a second. Let's add two zeros to this number. So zero into zero is zero, zero and one. If we add two zeros, it doesn't affect this one. But if we add two zeros, hmm, 100%. Maybe we can use a number called normalized numbers are numbers that are between an interval of zero and one and represent nothing and the full thing. Guess what? If you have a tile, you have nothing and you have a full thing. So this represents a hundredth percent of the tile. So the trick we're going to do, if you're seeing the drawing over there, is my drawing, whatever the drawing is, is going to be between minus 0 0.5 and plus 0 0.5. This means I can use any number. If I want a tile two meters big, I just multiply this, this tile by two meters. If I want this number to be 24 or 27.9 centimeters, a full A4 paper, I just multiply this tile times 27.9. So 100% times the measurement I want. OK, this is the concept. So we're going to use a full normalized number. It means a percentage number between 0 and 1. And then I'll multiply it by the end measurement I want. So if I want it to be 5 centimeters, multiply it by 5. If I want it to be 50 pixels on the screen, I multiply it by 50 pixels. And I'll always get the number I want. The fun of computer is this might be a small number. No, it's actually. 5, 5, 1, 3, 2, what, the precision of this number is incredible. So you can actually have very, very precise tile. Okay. But for the sake of simplicity, let's just use 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and we'll try to go from there on. So this is the concept of drawing tiles from the center using normalized tiles from the center. Don't worry, just putting it out there and we'll go to the code. And then we can have some fun with it. Okay, this is my, this is my, so these concepts come from uh, this, these uh, ideas have been applied in, in several artworks, like Antonio Quasfredo, who was, who was actually a teacher in our school, and he did it by hand. But this, for me, is pretty algorithmic. And we actually interpreted this, this, uh, his work in a research project called Vision Transfer. You can uh, look for it online. And we did a workshop with students who used his algorithms or interpretations of his algorithms. I don't want to mess with anyone's <laughs> right uh, uh, and uh, we cre recreated book covers uh, using uh, his aesthetics uh, or for example maria kyle uh, a visual artist from the and graphic designer from the 50s uh, well, maybe later oh, sorry um i would be these uh, tiles actual tiles really uh, ceramic tiles in in lisbon who are actually pretty um, famous uh, and you can actually see the multi-resolution going on here so she, she switches from a big pattern into a smaller pattern so this is the inspiration of, of for this workshop and crazy crazy stuff really cool crazy stuff i really love her work yeah uh, or for example carl martin the dutch designer who also does this with other stuff like units so i'm just showing some inspiration if you want to go for it for it these are uh, colleagues from of ours, uh, Fabio Dorte Martins, Ricardo Filipe Tantas e, e, e Ruben Dias from Itan Zero, who actually apply these concepts on, for example, this one is, uh, is still unpublished, is a pattern Ricardo is doing, but this one is already published in a book, it's, it's called uh, uh, the book papers that separate chapters, they should have some names. Uh, they use these kind of patterns to, to, to cut the flow of the book. And they use this, they reproduce in software, a, a, an old process called mesotinting. So this is actually a chemical process and they yeah, reproduce it in digitally and they do this crazy gradient patterns are really, really beautiful. Yeah, but enough. So let's go. Processing. Processing was the software developed by, by um, in, in MIT to help uh, artists learn how to program and programs to learn how to do the arts. So 
the MIT Computational Aesthetics Group actually mixes the both of us. It was started by John Maeda uh, back in the, in the 90s as designed by numbers. And then two of his students picked up his concepts and applied them in the processing environment. So this slide is still the old slide. It's still processing three, we're using processing four, but this slide is just to illustrate that this comes from very old concepts of education taken by Maeda. And then they were uh, headed by Ben Fry and Casey Reyes who later founded the Processing Foundation and gave birth to a whole ecosystem. So I really recommend you look at p5.js, basil.js, uh, I don't know, uh, drawbot, not processing, but there's a whole ecosystem of creative coding that you can, they can use. And of course, if you're here, you probably already know the answer to this, this question. I wanna use processing, computational processing power to do more complex or more fun or more stuff. And I'll just go through this because I already showed them. And where to learn, I highly recommend these two books. This is one is really boring, it's a manual, but this one we have here at school, the generative design, the first edition that's done in processing. It's really, really great. And it's really visual. Or, and of course the website, or if you're a video person, just log on to YouTube and see Shiftman. Shiftman is our guru. Shiftman will have everything. Shiftman is the coding train. So if you go on to YouTube, search for coding train, and you have all the way from drawing a ball like we're going to do in five minutes to doing neural networks so he's the guy and yeah and that's it so let's go um processing if you already have it on your computer just just uh, open up processing uh, uh i'll just quit powerpoint if i am able to do this in this computer and uh, bruna is also here Hola, bruna. <laughs> um, so what's going to happen? I'm going to open up processing uh, if you already have it on your computer. And there's a startup screen and uh, yeah, just go for it. Usually I let me just take this out, take this out and, and take this out. Okay. Uh, I'll just put, um, I, I've already enlarged the screen so we can actually, how's it going to uh, I've, got to uh, I've, I've just enlarged the typeface, so we're probably opening up the, your computer, your processing environment, and you're going to see something. This is the IDE. So you're going to see this. Probably your typeface is going to be smaller. And the people back home, just tell me if you can actually see this okay. Yeah, what time time is it? Uh, okay. uh, if you want to change this, uh, usually I'm... I, I change this because of classes or sometimes late at night, I, I, when you're tired, you make things bigger on your screen and you can actually go to settings and change the, the, the size of your typeface if you want to, okay? Uh, but yeah, so people, vocês já fizeram experiências? Já programaste? Nunca programaste? Não, não, não perder isto. Ah, então é assim. We have a first time beginner. So the classical thing everyone does when you haven't yet programmed, Sphere, follow me, write with me, print, ln, commas, hello world. This is the classical first program everyone has to do in their first day of computer science 101. Tem sempre para parentes. Queres que maior o texto? Print line, print ln, parentheses. Whenever the, uh, there's a rule, whenever you open something in the in the computer environment, in the programming environment, when you open it, always remember to close it immediately. Otherwise, you can you try to forget. Then do commas and do a hello world, right? And just go for play. And someone tell me what happened. Alguém que ajuda a Sofia a perceber o que se passou? I can just pick up the door. Então. Sim? Então, o que é que se passou? Uh -huh. Ah, okay. So what, what we're actually seeing here uh, uh, in, the, in the moment is, uh, Sophia is telling me that what, what you're seeing here, I usually use this example. So Sophia, first of all, congratulations, you're a programmer. 
So we've done your first program and it's actually a full program. It's working well, we can argue it's a full program because it doesn't have conditional things, but it's a full program. Uh, what is, I use this, this example to, to talk about the, the environment. So this is the integrated environment. It's our global, but they designed it as a, a stripped down interface. You can actually have code completion if you activate it on the settings, or you can use processing with your favorite editor, your code editor, like Visual Studio Code or something. But they did it like this because, because they have an educational purpose. They want to for you to focus on learning your concepts, okay? So this is basic text. They want you to deal with text. So this is where you interact with the computer by running instructions. An instruction is something, a reserved keyword. Well, a reserved keyword doesn't make for an instruction, but usually it's a word, a specific word, function, a method, um, that the computer already knows. So processing, so if you have your computer and then you have Java, so there's an application environment, uh, programming language, and then processing runs on top of, of Java, simplifying the language. So processing said, okay, if you want to write something to the computer, you use this command. If you want to draw something to the screen, you use this command. So these commands, these instructions, these methods, these functions, this word is a function, is something that the computer already knows how to translate and what to do graphically or programmatically. And usually after a function, you say, computer do something. And the computer says, oh, yes. And it says, do something with this. So these are called the parameters. So print line, as you may have guessed, writes a line of text onto the console down here is the console. So this is the IDE, the full ID, the, the window, the integrated developer environment. This is where you do the, the white thing is where you do the instructions. And the, the black thing is where, ah, come on, I'm going to see for the multitasking. Um, mouse, 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 cursor, 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 cursor. Uh, size, cursor size. Um, was it pointer size? Okay. Okay, so right here, you write stuff here, you write instructions for the computer to follow. And right here, this one will do a lot, print and print line. This is the console. This is where the computer says to you what it's doing. And a way for you to talk with the computer is ask me, tell me, tell me, print, print me something, what you're doing. So I asked the computer to print me inside the parameters in this, arms, I gave the computer some parameters, give me this string of text. So a string of text is characterized in Java by commas, double commas, and then just words. This is a phrase, string of text. So I could ask him to tell me print 10 and it's just print 10, okay. Yeah, okay, it prints a number, okay. So this, this actually asks the computer to do something for me, okay. So the print line will be our main interface for us to know how what processing is doing, okay? Uh, it looks dumb, but it's very important. So uh, let's let's just go for it. So that is an example of the hello world. Sophia, uh, hello world, pretty também. Faz, save as, zero um, hello world. Ah, não pode ser com números. Tem que ser de vinte e três, zero um, hello world. E depois eu comento isto. I'll later comment this, what I'm telling you. Uh, processing doesn't like spaces in the names, so when you save it, uh, yeah, just save it the best you can. Uh, it will complain, so yeah. So now let's go for a ball example. So processing has been designed to teach people how to do graphics, right? So if you're used to doing computer graphics, you know that invoking, just invoking the computer graphics library is a pain in the ass. So uh, let's just uh, invoke graphics here or draw. Let's just draw. Uh, ah, uh, keg of fish. Something I activated insert by some miraculous uh, thing in my keyboard. Uh, 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 let's, okay, drawing, okay. So let's, let's just draw. Uh, and just write with me, you say que fiz ali uma coisa diferente, mas já explico. Write with me something ellipse. Just Right, ellipse. And the computer is already saying, ah, something is wrong with this. You're, we're used to writing stuff on the on the on Microsoft Word or on the text editors. And we 
intuitively we know that this something is wrong with this, right? Because the computer is like, I don't really like that word, okay? So let's let's look at what's happening here. First of all, I wrote something here on the top. It's called a comment. This is actually you can podemos isto é um comentário. This will not be interpreted by the computer. So this is only used to write notes for ourselves or for others. Okay. So this is the comment. A comment is done by writing two slashes, two forward slashes, and then something. There's more ways to write comments, and we'll go for it later. And then we wrote an instruction over here. And we wrote ellipse. Okay. I know this is right because whenever I'm typing, if you subscribe in Portuguese, if I wrote in Portuguese ellipse, it's pretty pretty simple. But notice the difference. The computer has all the text in black. So it means it's treating the text as text. But if I change it into English as the reserved words, so double L, the text becomes blue. So the computer is recognizing that word. So it knows that word. So when you draw an ellipse, the computer already knows what, what, what's an ellipse. So we already knows what to do. And yeah, but something is wrong because the computer highlighted this and it says functional ellipse. There's something over here. So it's, it's complaining. It's, it's expecting parameters. So let's do a quick detour and say, if, how do I know what to do and what words and what comments? Aqui é a parte onde eu vos digo, lamento, tem que ler. Uh, mas tudo se resolve. Okay. This is the part where you have to study a bit, but it's very fast to study. So just go to reference and it, it will open up the, the processing website. Uh, and you actually have the, the reference, uh, it's becoming better, uh, but it's, it, it looks scary in the beginning. Okay. So what, what I recommend you to do is, I'll just put this bigger. What I recommend you to do is pay attention to the, the hints. First of all, if you know what to look for, like we're going to do matrix transforms and never know where it is, you can actually search, search for, for transforms and, it's, and it searches. But when you don't know what to search, you have topics over here, shortcuts. So we'll start by drawing. So let's look at the topics, rendering output, structure, input, image, oh, well, image. I can click image. But when, when I click image, uh, I don't know what it is, sorry. Uh, when I click image, it comes all the way to P image, data type for storing images. Um, yeah, pixel, I'm not doing pixels. I just want to draw to the screen. Okay, not this. I go back up, image, color, control. I could do color, okay. Constant shape. This is not very intuitive. <laughs> I know this by heart already, but shapes, shapes. Let's look at shapes. So shapes, P shape. This is pretty strange, not know what this is, but look at this, 2D primitives. So my first take on processing is that you should get familiar with some basic knowledge of what it does. You can either browse or scroll through the help and see more or less what it has for you to know what to search for, or you can just go to learn in examples, for example, or tutorials, and you have the basics and you go through this, so this is my, my, my take on, on how to use the reference. So I would go here, I would scroll down, try, take a look, look at shapes, circle. I usually draw circle or ellipse. Let's do an ellipse because I don't like circle. I, I learned doing ellipse. So I, let's do ellipse. Ah, oh, come on. Do I really have to read everything? No, that's the fun of it. You can actually just come here, copy the line of code you want, copy and paste it over here. And then you read, you always have to read, okay? <laughs> I don't want to, to, to pass the, the wrong message. You really should read. Okay, you, you write an ellipse. What's happening now? The computer already accepted this. Why? Because it was expecting, I'm gonna do an error again. The computer says the function ellipse expects parameters like ellipse, float, 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 float. I'm, I'm gonna explain this in a bit. So one, two, three, four. Okay, I have one. Two, three, okay. So if you know how to draw an ellipse, uh, my ellipse tem sempre um diâmetro maior e um diâmetro menor, portanto, um círculo, mas puxa-se uns diâmetros. Uh, so this means that the first parameter is the center. So X and Y. So it's always using Cartesian coordinates. So the, the processing drawing space 
you can imagine the processing drawing space as a as a, a, a grid paper where the zero is over here. If you move to the right, you move one, zero. If you move again, two, zero. So this is always X and this is always Y. So when you move down, so now we have two, one. Okay. So the first two parameters are X and Y. So uh, X and Y. Moving to the right or to the left, moving down or up. And the second parameters are the, the horizontal diameter and then the vertical diameter. It's always horizontal and vertical afters, always like this, okay? So you do this uh, one, two, three, four, and you just press play and you see what you have. Yeah, this actually didn't go very well because it didn't draw. Uh, let's change again. Let's just do 20. Let's take something out. Let's do it again. Aha, now I have something. Why wasn't I having anything in the previous example? And why do I have it now? Eh? A forma de desenhar, mas por quê? Por que eu estava a desenhar? O que, que aconteceu aqui? What happened here? If I was drawing this, if I draw this, it goes away. Why? Uh, maybe because the ellipse is bigger than the canvas. Uh, a Ana está aqui a dizer no, no desculpa que eu agora estou a ouvir duas coisas muito, eu não consigo. A Ana está aqui a dizer no, 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 no chat que a ellipse é maior que o canvas. É quase isso, não é bem a ellipse que é maior que o canvas. So the ellipse is not bigger than the canvas. I told you that this is X and this is Y. Position, yeah. Não, desculpa, não estava a ouvir uh, X and Y. So this is the width and let's put it over here. And this is the height. So what happens when I, the 200 is too big for the screen. So our screen is actually pretty small. So this is just 200 pixels. If I do 180, you'll already see the, the ellipse, a bit of the ellipse. I, well, maybe not 90. You see a bit of the ellipse over here because the ellipse is going to the right. So this is the horizontal position. This is the vertical position. So, and we're on, we're on the right track but not the correct answer. So this is X, X position, Y position, height, uh, width, so the alargura, so the, the size of it and the height of it. Height, okay. So this is what determines um, our shape. So when you go here, draws an ellipse, a novel to the screen, I'll just put it over here. Uh, okay. This draws a novel to the screen and it says it describes an ellipse. And then the first two parameters set the location and the third, the third and the fourth. So you actually have to read it once in your lifetime. And then you set it and forget it. And you just have to remember horizontal first, vertical afterwards. Width first, height second. Always X and then Y. Always width and then height. Always like this. And of course, then you can continue reading. And there's something more over here that we'll talk about in a, in a few seconds. So, but this is not very funny. Just to draw things onto the screen, onto a very small screen, is not very funny. It's, it's like a, a, a gray screen. It's already a program. It's already running. It's, a, it's an application. You see, para mal toda programação, é tão simples fazer uma aplicação. So, if you really want to do an application right now, if you want to become a full programmer, you just go here to File, Export Application. And it becomes a desktop application. It's really cool. Just, yeah, okay, I have to save it. Export and Mac OS, okay, yeah. Presentation mode, yeah, don't worry. Uh, yeah, export. Right. Okay. Sorry guys, the zoom just uh, fell down, it's just a second. Okay. Yeah, it's fine. Pronto, é claro que isto é uma aplicação enorme, tem 270 mega para fazer uma bola no ecrã. É estúpido, é just stupid. But... Yeah, uh, or not, I don't know. For people who don't know how to do applications, uh, this is perfect for me. Uh, so let's go back to into processing. 
and continue our, our, our tour. So I'll just, I'll increase the speed right now. Porque já estou, não estou, ainda não estou atrasado. Okay. So we have our processing application. This is not very fun. So please save your application like ball, number two ball, something like this. Um, and we're starting our third application. Our third application is going to be, yeah, if I press play, it just opens up this small screen and it actually doesn't do much stuff. So now we have to deal with the environment. Processing is expecting you for you to define what the application will look like, the size of it, the color of it, and then what to do when you draw. So when you do this, you have to know about uh, at least two special functions in processing. It's called a setup. Just go with me, void setup and void draw. This is the bread and butter of processing. So what's happening here? This is a special word that we won't deal with it today. This means that just, just tell the computer, just run this and yeah, and then continue. Don't expect for people to do anything else. So just run a void method called setup. The computer processing is already prepared to call this function. And this function is only called once. So when you open application, setup runs. Like when you go for the car, you only press, you only turn the, the car key once, right? So you don't, whenever you want to drive, you don't turn the car key. So setup is turning the car key. It's like starting the engine. And then when the engine is running, it just goes. So setup prepares and draw continuously does things. So setup runs once, turning the key, and then the engine is working. And then you just press on the gas and it goes, you turn to the left and it turns to the left. So draw is where everything is going to be done. What does this do? Simple. Setup, for example, tells the size of the screen. So the size of the screen only needs to be told once, right? Just say size. Remember, width and height. I'm, I'm forgetting to, to uh, show you something that's very important. Uh, so let's, let's just do 400, 400. So width, 400, height, 400. And this tells me that the screen now is bigger. The window, sorry, the window, the, the application window. I'm forget, I forgot to tell you a very important thing. Whenever you want to do, tell the computer to do something, do something and then stop. I forgot to tell you about this, the terminator. It's in Java, it, Java is a, a declared uh, language. So you, uh, it's the same as saying it's a nitty picky language. It, it complains about everything. And um, you really have to tell it when you want to stop doing stuff. So change the size of the window and stop. Change the color of the window and stop. Draw a ball and stop. So let's change the color of the window, background. And now, ladies and gentlemen, como é que estamos no nosso RGB? How are our uh, RGB values? Uh, do you remember your RGB values from computer science class? Do you remember how to do color in the computer? No. Okay, so, uh, não estamos a ouvir. Uh, ah, okay, okay. So, whenever you want to do color in the computer, uh, you do color. So you could actually say this is size of window uh, and this paints the background uh, of the window. So now you, you, want, you want to say something over here, my color, something like this. So the computer has several ways to place color. If you go to Photoshop, you can actually see Actually, processing uh, has a cool stuff called the color selector. You can actually open up a color selector. It's, it looks like Photoshop, right? It has a, a, you have an HSB color picker over here. You can, you can actually see the color values. You can actually use color in hexadecimal, RGB, or HSV. By default, we're going to use our RGB color. So you want to pick up a color. For example, I want to pick up, for example, red. It's always red for me. Okay. You want to pick up a color and it says the red value is 255. Wait a second, 255. If I go downwards over here, it goes to zero. So the color itself va varies between zero and 255. 
and now it has three colors because it's RGB. Well, this must be. Eu não, vou, eu não tenho tempo para explicar o que é, que é o RGB, mas uh, if you mix all the components of color, like you're doing a musical stage, uh, you have the blue light, you have the red light, and then you have the green light. When you mix all the components, you have white light, right? So this is the, the additive mixing of colors. So we just go for 25500, and this is full red. Oh, 255, 255. Okay, so this will be a full red. You can actually copy this and paste it over here. And it, well, it, it, no, not this one. So 25500. Uh, by default, processing uses uh, RGB values. We can change this uh, by changing the color mode. You can just come here and see color mode. Uh, and you can change between HSV, uh, where is it? Uh, HSB, uh, RGB, and hexadecimal, I think. Uh, where's the examples? Uh, maybe I'm saying something wrong, but yeah. You, we, can, we can change this. We're not going to change it. Just for you to know that you can actually use another color system. Uh, you cannot use SMIC. Uh, Dropbox uses SMIC if you want. Uh, so we use this, and guess what? We press play, and now we have a red background. Pretty cool, right? So not, it didn't do anything. So we changed the size of the window and we changed the color of the background of the window. So now we want to draw the ball again. So let's just draw ellipse. Remember how to draw always X, Y, width and height. So now we can actually say 100, 100 and 50, 50 and we have a pretty cool ball more or less over here. So yeah. A white ball and a red background. Yeah, it looks like Christmas again. Right? Our application is running pretty smooth, doing graphics, doing this kind of stuff. If you count it, you have one, two, three, four, five. Well, take this out six, seven lines of code. You can't do this in other languages, okay? Uh, it's, this is very compact language. Of course, there's a big overhead, but this is a very compact and e efficient language. And you have a white ball and a red background. Perfect. Not very interesting. Still not very interesting. Let's make this stuff interesting. Processing is done by computers. Computers update and move and interact. So let's do this interact with us. This is the fastest thing, the fastest way I've ever done this. Guys, come with me. Just change this word for mouse X. Notice that this word is turned pink right press play and play with it again okay. just press play and see what it does you got it you got it Woohoo! now something is moving and does this look okay but gosh on this no name please Mas parece certo. Does this look okay? Um, does it look right? Does it look like it's working? Deixa eu ver. Parece um bug gigantesco. Opa, se isto ainda não é divertido, então faz o seguinte. Muda a segunda para mouse X. Mouse Y. Ok. Agora é que parece uma minhoca. Ok. Okay, guys, uh, computer drawing 101, really simple, really fast. So this, I think this is pretty cool already. You can actually do, if you go faster or slower, you can actually do some tricks right now to get this growing. So this is already doing some kind of weird stuff. Let's, let's uh, stop for a second and see what's happening here. This is a special word comp the computer has. The computer, the processing environment is asking the computer to tell it where the mouse is. So this is called a reserved word, uh, a special word. Uh, uh, in protos palavras, in other words, it's a variable. Okay. So this is a word that stands for a number. Mouse X asks, asks the computer, where is the X of the mouse? And this number converts itself to 100, 200, 300, wherever the horizontal position of the mouse is, the computer is going to tell you, oh, mouse X now is this. 
cosmos x now z is that. So this is a special variable that the computer already has, well, processing already has, and it's always updating. If you try to do this over here in setup, it doesn't work because setup runs first and then it runs draw. So when it runs setup, the, yeah, if you try to do this, the, the ball will be zero, zero, it'll be over here. Actually, if you, if you play, if we press play, the ball is already in zero, zero, remember? Because the computer starts and it still doesn't have the zero of the, the, the X of the mouse, so it goes to zero. Okay, so you want to be careful with this. So uh, let's talk about variables. Uh, so the setup and draw, this is the environment, setup. It's a special word, a special method, methods, uh, functions, special components, right? So it's a special function. And uh, I haven't explained this already. It's a function, it's a block of code, it's a task. So what this curly bracket does, this once you, sorry, once you run setup, you will run everything inside of it instead of just one thing. Okay, so this curly bracket says it's a block of code. When you run setup, when the computer calls setup, it runs everything. When the computer calls draw, it runs everything. So everything is still not defined. So let's let's have a bit of fun, and I will I will explain this a little different from what, what I usually do in classes. So you might want to save your sketch here, environment. Uh, let's just do setup and draw. Setup plus draw. I don't know if I can use plus. Setup and draw. Okay. Uh, so you, you we're going we are going always to work with void setup and void draw from now on. So everything gets prepared on setup and our drawing gets continuously updated on draw. And we're using static values or variables like mouse X. So if we do this, we're doing static values. Let's do another ellipse. And this one, let's place it downwards. So two ellipse, one on the 100, another on the 100, right? One static, one moving. Let's do another ellipse. Uh, aqui pode ser no 100, aqui pode ser no 300. Uh, desculpem, desculpem, aqui pode ser no 200. Ah, uh, mouse Y. So these are uh, variables. So this one moves down, this one moves to the left, and the, the other one is static, right? Right? But yeah, this is not very useful, still not very useful, uh, because we might want to draw uh, custom, custom stuff. So let's, let's just say, uh, I still haven't gone into colors, I know. I'm following the mouse, and let's just say, um, yeah, I want to. So instead of the, ah, como é que eu vou dizer isto? Uh... Desculpa, estou a ver aqui as minhas notas. Uh... Esqueci-me quando é que tinha que fazer as variáveis. Okay, let's go, let's go here. Uh... Let's say, like, uh, like uh... someone in, in, the, in the Zoom, I forgot her name, was saying, I'm going to do visual, uh, information visualization. So let's imagine that you have our ages in this class and we want, each ball to represent bigger, the age, bigger the ball, uh, smaller the age, smaller the ball. So we have to somehow figure out a way to store numbers, ages, and then use these numbers, the ages, to draw them. So we have to create memory. We have to create a box where to save them, where to remember. And then we have to go into the box and pick up the numbers. These are called variables also like this, okay? So these are system variables, system variables, and we're gonna use user variables. So I'm gonna do a mistake right now because usually 
I, I explain variables in a different way. I'll do it later. But just for, for the fun of it, uh, I, I'm stealing this from Stig Muller um, uh, in, the, in the processing community today from Coimbra. He did this workshop and he did it like this. So I'm going to save our sketch and I'm going to show you something cool. Let's create a variable. Let's do it like this. We're going to create a variable. It's a number. So processing, Java desktop processing, Java de uh, processing, it doesn't like us. It, it wants us to be exact. So if we want a number, we say we want a number. If we want a precise number, we use a precise number. If we want a string or a text or a color, we use text, color, string. So we have to tell the computer, I'm going to use a variable to store a number. So we start by saying, I'm going to use a number, a full number entire, an integer, integer number. So int, what follows will be a, a box to store numbers. Uma variável é uma caixa que guarda coisas. Nesse caso, é uma caixa, não sei se uma caixa de ovos. Like, go to the supermarket, you have a box for eggs, you have a box for wine. You have a box for, I don't know. So boxes in processing have to be specific for the things it holds. You can change them, but yeah. So this tells me what is what follows is a box for numbers. And we're going to say that. Let's just call it in Portuguese. The advantage of picking another language is this one. It doesn't mess with the, with the, the computer code. So first of all, this is called declaring a variable okay uh, and now we say edad equals i don't know 50. Now let's use a different number 70 because this is already 50. okay so this is called initializing a variable i have no clue how to write this Okay, initializing, initializing. Yeah, maybe something like this, okay. Uh, this means we're, you tell the computer, give me a box and now put a number in that box and now we're gonna use the, the variable, now using it, using the variable. Okay, so now using the variable, it's as simple as saying, okay, I'm just gonna pick up an ellipse. I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw it on, on the screen, like here. 300, it's going to be the, the bottom the bottom to the right. And I'm going to say, yeah, my ball will be equal to my age. Yeah. So right now we have four balls, four ellipses, and the fourth ball is the biggest one. So if we change the size of the ball and play again, notice that we never change the drawing, we only change the numbers. So this allows us to separate the data from the procedure. This is very important in the computer. You just have to have the settings, the computer instructions, and then you have the actual drawing instructions. And the drawing instructions will draw always the same thing with different numbers. We're just changing the numbers and the output will be different. Okay, so changing, you draw with the variables, instead of changing the way you draw, the way the computer codes how to draw, you change the numbers that are fed to the drawing program. See? Yeah, everyone in Zoom getting? Yeah, okay. So, I never did this as fast as this, but let's try to keep on going. Uh, so this allows us to separate what's the update, uh, the, the update and the drawing. So we update the numbers and then we draw. We update the numbers and then we draw. So the fun of this is that, well, I'm doing this here. I, sh I shouldn't be doing this here. I should be doing this here. I'm, I'm just gonna do this for uh, 04. I'm going to do correct variables. <laughs> and, and then I'm going to show you what I, what I want to do. So I should be doing this over here. Declaring variables should be done, should, well, yeah, should be done here on the top of the program because this will be a global scope variable. This variable will be accessible throughout the whole program. And then you initialize a variable in the setup, OK, 
Okay. So right now I'm trying to organize the program. <laughs> There's a thunderstorm out there. Uh, right now I'm just trying to explain it to you that declaring should be done outside because you want to use this variable throughout a program if you want to use this variable throughout the whole program. So this variable will be accessible in setup, in draw, etc. And then you initialize it. Of course, the setup is the ideal place to initialize because you prepare the program, you load the program with data, and then you draw. So you just use the variable. So this is the correct way to do it. Okay. Setup. So declare. Setup. Initialize. Draw. Use it. Okay. This is the correct way. But bear with me, Dave. I'm gonna do just just for fun for you to see it better. I'm gonna do tweak mode. So now you can really understand what this does. So tweak mode has to have the variables. I'm just I'm just gonna take out everything out. Tweak mode just has to stay here, declare and initialize at the same time. So I'm I'm doing something. Grava, Fasmo copy nova, just save it, do a copy. I'll 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 save it and comment, I'll separate the sketches and I'll give it to you separated. I just wanted to see this because this is really cool. I don't think this is correct, but this is really cool and really fast. This explains why processing is so cool and fun. So if you save this one as tweak mode, okay, save it. Let's just do something. Instead of pressing play, let's go here to sketch. Uh, sorry, uh, I don't know how to do this. Ah, sketch, tweak. You have to save it first and play with tweak mode. So tweak mode only works if you have the variable declared in the draw loop. Uh, it's just for fun, just bear with me. If you, if you declare a variable, no, come on, fix Pasoki. Pasos. Okay, stop, sounds good. Pasos. Eu já tinha feito isto, não já? Eu já tinha feito isso. Okay, something went wrong, save, okay. Sketch, tweak. Okay. If you do tweak modes and you have your variable declared in inside the draw, once again, I don't really recommend this unless you want to have fun. And you might want to have fun in the beginning. Notice that now the numbers in tweak modes, the numbers appear to be underlined. And this, what happens when the numbers are underlined? It means that you can play with the numbers in real time. Okay, just click on the number and scroll. And the numbers change in real time. So notice that when I'm changing a hard coded number like the X, like the horizontal position of the ball, I'm changing in the drawing instruction. Yeah, it works. Not the, the funnest thing to do. But if I change the variable, because this variable is linked here, this variable is being used in the drawing. If I change the variable, the drawing also changes. Okay. So the trick here is to draw with variables and update the variables. So the drawing is always the same. If the variables change, the drawing changes. The tweak mode is really fun. And then when you stop it, it want to keep the changes? Yes. And now I have my custom made ball over here. Okay. Eu sei, está a ser uma seca, uma bola vermelha, eu sei, está a demorar muito tempo, mas bear with me, it's just for a little while, it takes, it takes a while to, to get into it. So, right now, we're actually just one step away from completing what I thought I would be completing in the first hour, is properties. So, right now, we're just doing a red background with a, uh, with a, with a white ball. And it has an ugly black contour. So, the computers, um, when it draws, uh, you have to remember that the, the screen is being redrawn every time. So when you move something, the computer says, okay, draw that. And now you move it and the computer says, okay, so now I have to redraw everything on a new position. That's why when you change the position of the ball, when, you, when we were using mouse X over here, the ball was leaving a drag. 
it was leaving a drag because no one was telling the computer to clean the screen. So we actually have to clean the screen before doing a new drawing. So let's change the background over here from the setup into the draw. Clean the previous drawing. So if you paint over it, it cleans. You're always painting over it. So now you can actually move the ball and no trail. Okay, what happens was I told the computer every time you draw, paint the background. So paint over it, paint, paint, paint. So it's, it gets cleaned every time. Uh, cleaned or paint over, okay? That's all okay, zoom. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, and now to draw the ball, before drawing, the computer is very dumb. So if you ask for the computer to draw the ball, it draws the ball and then say, but I want it to be yellow. And the computer goes and fetches the color yellow and says, okay, now I have the yellow. Now what? So first you have to tell the computer, first get the yellow and then draw with the yellow. So otherwise the computer doesn't understand. So first you configure properties, configure graphic properties, and then you draw. Okay. So configure graphic properties. We can go all the way to the reference and say, okay, I want to use a, a line width or a stroke width. I want to use a stroke color. I'll I'll go faster. I'll go faster. So I'll just say I want to use a stroke, for example, a green stroke, RGB, RGB. So zero to hundred zero will give me a green stroke. Yeah, it's kind of green. Yeah, it's small. Or for example. I don't want any stroke. No stroke. Now notice that the computer, the method, the function to tell it to have a stroke of no color is using a camelback notation, no uppercase stroke. Okay. So this, these things you have to actually see on the reference. But the idea is this, any computer language, first you have to tell it how to draw and then draw. Otherwise it will draw and then it will pick up the colors and say, yeah, I'm ready to draw again. And nothing happened. Okay. So first you configure the graphic properties and then draw. And if you want to change the fill, you just go fill and you want to fill, I don't know, a hundred and it goes dark gray. What? Dark gray? Was it, wasn't it RGB? Yeah, this is short notation for a hundred, a hundred, a hundred. So if you just press it once, it's the same value for everyone. And it's just paint so yeah. See? Okay. So this is uh, excuse me. No, sorry, don't uh, is everyone okay? Uh, yeah. Good. Laura, does it tell us this lab? Does it seguir o no? Yeah, so. E tá, dá para seguir? Tá. Tá? Ok, ok. Tá, tá. Então, estás a ser meu barómetro. Eu estou a olhar para a Sofia, a ali muito atrapalhada. Ok. Então vá. Qualquer coisa, pare-me. And if you, uh, you're having doubts anywhere, just please stop me and I'll, I'll make sure I'll, I'll do, go slower. So, uh, this, this is the first thing. So, the, the first part of the workshop. So, I usually don't do this again. So this is the first for me on many aspects also. I'm gonna show you a different stuff. Uh, notice that the computer is always drawing. It, it's never stopping. It's always drawing a ball wherever it is, right? So uh, if we want, if you, I told you that the setup runs once. Setup runs once. Ah. And draw runs every time at the speed it can. Usually at 60 frames per second or near. If you have a lot of instructions, then it slows down. 
you can actually count the frame rate um, or while it's okay to run. <laughs> why, why, I'm why am I telling this why it's okay to run? Because we can actually tell processing to stop running the draw loop. By today, we, we, we want it to stop. We want to run it once and then it stop. And then we play the space bar again and we want to run it again to generate a new combination and then stop. And then we want to run it again. So we actually want to stop the draw. And what we do, uh, we tell the computer the command no loop. So if we do the no loop, it will draw the first time and then it will stop running. The computer actually is still running. It's just not doing the draw, okay? The computer is still listening for, for stuff. So we play it. Yeah. It's, it stopped. The, the application is still running. It's not frozen. You don't go to the system. If you go to the system, oh, if you go to the system, if you go to the system, it's still running. It's not frozen. It's not force created. Oh, yeah. We just told the computer, just stop doing the draw. Let's do a trick. This is the first time for me also. So we have the setup runs once. We have the draw. The computer automatically tries to go. And then we have special events. Guess what? Microphone is an event. Keyboard is an event. The mouse is an event. Something that happened, the, the time changing in the computer is an event. When the time changes, do something. When the user clicks, do something. So right now we're gonna tell the computer when the user clicks the keyboard or the space or the, the mouse, let's do the mouse first. Void, mouse, released. Ah, release. Okay, do something. This tells, this tells the computer when the computer hears the mouse being clicked, run this. This is what this function is doing. This function gets called automatically when the computer gets a click and processing, oh, I hear a click, do this. So when the computer hears a click, guess what? Let's play, let's play again. Look. So what happens is because this ball will be following the mouse, when I click somewhere on the application window, the ball will go immediately to that place. So click. Uh, or not? Uh, okay, uh, I should have did it with the Okay. Uh, ah, I don't think I don't think if I play. Okay. Uh, so what happens is the computer runs, stops, and it's still running, but it's not drawing. And we tell it when you hear a click, run again, and it draws the ball and it stops running. And so the ball gets to the place it wants to go and stops. So it actually feels like the ball is trying to follow the mouse. Okay, so this is a pretty cool control of flow control. The very simple flow control. You can actually change the, the mouse uh, or, for example, you can change it to a, the space bar. Uh, let's use a key and then we'll use the space bar later. Just key press or key is released, okay. So right now, if you press any key with the active window, it just runs again, okay? So this is, well, this, this, uh, this is not very, very interesting, the loop thing. Uh, well, let's, let's maintain it here. I could actually, I could, I could say background. No, okay, I'm not doing, I'm not with a touch, okay. Sorry, I usually go off script. I'm not going off script. I'll use this later, okay. So this, this is just a simple way for me to show you, you can have flow control, user flow control uh, very easily by doing special event functions. This is an event function. When the user does something, then run these instructions. Um, so yeah, uh, for example, we could actually, I don't know. Let's let's try let's try to connect things now. Let's try to connect all the stuff. Uh, this is uh, flow control. Quick mode. Okay. Oh, okay. Flow control. Switch. 
sorry, this is for me to organize. And now let's connect stuff. Connect the drawing to variables. Connect drawing. Let's let's just let's just say for a second. Okay, you start the program. You clean the backgrounds. You say my age and you draw a ball my age. It's just what if I wanted whenever the user presses the space bar, the age would be random. Like the ball would change from size. So right now we told the ball would be the size, but this size is specific. So let's let's go back to the original computers flow structure that you should use. I want to use this variable here, but I also want to use this variable over here. Change the size of the ball, okay? So how do we change the size of the ball? We could actually say draw the ellipse, but better, we can just change the size of the variable. We don't have to change the, the, the drawing, we just have to change the number of the drawing. So whenever I change the size of a ball, so the size size equals edad, so change edad, right? The problem is that this variable, if you try to run it of like this, the variable, I usually, I usually in classes, I explain this. When this is, this is like a house, uh, a, a function, this block of code that starts with this curly bracket is like a house. If you're inside the house and you call someone, people outside don't hear you. But if you're outside the house and you call, usually on the neighborhood, everyone in the neighborhood hears you. So every block of code knows variables that are being called outside, but the variable being called inside cannot go to other houses, to other blocks of code. So what we have to do is initialize a variable as a global variable over here. For it to be able to be used in other places. So right now, again, we, we, we're changing this to the, to the correct thing, is that equals to 150. So what, what I'm doing is I'm declaring, declaring, sorry, declaring a variable outside on the top of the program, on the root of the program. And then I'm initializing on setup or assigning, sorry, assigning. I'm, it's easier signing values in variables. And now, whenever I notice that this already does the same, so I have a variable, I put a number inside variable, and now I use the variable. So it still runs, it's still running. But now, whenever I press a key, né? nos vamos, né? pus a variável aqui em cima, pus o um número no setup, pode ser no draw, pode ser no setup. No draw vai ser um bocado estúpido porque ele vai estar sempre a 650, 650, 650, 650. Eu não vou conseguir mudar. Então, if you do this in draw, this will lock the number 150 on draw, so it will be very difficult to change. And now I want to change the variable, but, but when I have a so now it add equals to 300, for example. So it starts as a 150 ball, but whenever I press the space bar, guess what? Okay. Ah, okay. Estou faltando o release, desculpa. Keep press, okay. Keep press. Okay. Whenever I press the space bar. Hey. Ah, <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I forgot about this. Whenever you press the space bar, the ball gets bigger, okay? You change the, the size of the variable. Tell the program to run again, and it's yeah, it changes the ball. Well, not very funny because yeah, now it doesn't change back, right? Let's let's play with it. Let's play with this, guys. This is the fun moments where computers make sense. So ask the computer, give me a random number. So let's random. And well, you have to know that random does a number between zero and whatever number you give it. This is this kind of random. Usually, for example, in p5.js, JavaScript, or the other languages is just called for random, and it, it gives you a number between zero and one, 
then you multiply it by the number you want. Random can actually say, give me a random 500, so between zero and 500, or give me a number between 50 and 200. So this also, hmm, this should work. Now it's the time I forgot my processing things. Uh, why is not working? Window, why is this not working? Random. I shouldn't know this. <laughs> Sorry. My friends. Uh, huh. Why is it complaining? Ah, okay. Yeah, sure. Remember I told you processing was nitpicky? We told you that was an, in, an integer. I don't remember in title. It was a full number. The random number gives us floating point values. So floats, common numbers, are not really compatible with integers. So we can do this a number of ways. We can convert this number into an integer. So whatever number comes out of this, round it to full number. Or we can actually say, yeah, this is a float. Float numbers are common numbers, some numbers virgula. Why don't we use everything as a float? Yeah, it's a memory problem. Uh, we do p5.js, you don't have this kind of stuff. Um, so just remember, you can use floats or you can convert to integer. So my suggestion, just use a float and then it works. So right now you change the position of the ball with the mouse. When you press the space bar, Woohoo! Now we have some kind of variability. Joshua Davis called this the spacebar technology. When you press the spacebar, the computer does something and it's just magic. So right now it's just a ball, I know. <laughs> Not very interesting. But yeah, it's doing something, right? See? So this lays out the, the grounds uh, for, um, for drawing. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Safe. So let's let's start the second part of the workshop. We have three parts. Uh, Forty-five minutes for each. Okay, it's going on time. Not not too much time, but it's going on time. So let's start the second part of the workshop. Let's start drawing our custom tile. Okay. So right now, what we want from this, you might you might want to keep. Syntax error, missing operator. So when this happens, uh, okay, yes, thing. Estou à espera de mais gente, não sei. 
é o, o, o drama dos workshops gratuitos. Muito bem. Sim? Até aqui? Está a andar? Vamos ver como é que a malta em casa está a andar. Uh, new messages. Uma secácia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obrigado, Pedro. Sim. Uh, foi um bocadinho confuso, não queria explicar isto já, mas já ficou aqui explicado. Nós só vamos usar números hoje. We are going just to use numbers today, so, yeah. Uh, at least this uh, difference between full numbers and floating point numbers uh, gets uh, fixed. So right now, we we just let's just keep the let's just keep the void key pressed and the background and the size. I'll just let's just keep something and save it as the number eight i'm going to save it as a copy as a tile let's just draw a tile so right now we have been always using the void setup and the void draw okay and we feel we just drew ellipse let's let's just draw uh, this as a, a, a white background uh we, we have been doing this uh drawing ellipse so i want to draw a square so I want to draw a square, I could actually go square. I, have, I don't think I have ever done a square on processing. I always use the uh, rect, a rectangle. Uh, so a square or a rectangle just takes x, y, width and height. So let's place 100, 150, 100, for example. And this will give me a vertical rectangle. But, well, I, I could use a square. When the width equals to the height, it gives me a square. But for example, for the sake of the drawing, I know I'm going to be using this area, but I don't want to always draw a square. I want to draw a diamond. Uh, so I'm just going to take the diamond example for you to see another kind of drawing mode. The uh, reference, where's the reference? Uh, let's just go for the shape uh, rect, uh, vertex shape uh, create shape begin shape we're going to use a different kind of, of drawing so i encourage you to go to the 2d primitives that's all we need right now but ellipse rect circle ball well one of them arc is more complicated so not for today if you want to see arcs in motion you can just see the recording of the of the first workshop um but I'm going to reference and I'm going to use a, a thing called shape. Shape is like polygons. We can draw as many shapes as we want. Again, I'm too lazy to read this, but I encourage you to read. Uh, you have to start using begin shape and then use end shape and then you can uh, do points, line, triangle. Uh, I'm already tired. I'm just too lazy. I just go, I go by visually. If I want to do a rectangle, I do this. Okay, I can copy this. Copy. Paste. Okay, rectangle, begin shape, vertex, point, vertex, point, vertex, point, four points, and then close. Okay, pretty straightforward. One, two, three, four points, close, perfect. Or if I wanna do, well, a Tetris-like shape, okay. Copy, and paste, play, Tetris shape, okay. Pretty straightforward, point one, point two, point three, point four, point five, point six. One, two, three, four, five, six, close. Perfect, okay. So now I got the hang of it. So how to draw shapes. Now I want to draw my shape. Let's go, let's start doing our, our workshop. So the idea is, let's just draw a, a vamos só desenhar aqui um, um, just for the fun of it, the most simple strange shape we can draw is, let's just say, okay. Eu preciso fazer sempre isso porque eu engano, é verdade. Vamos desenhar a partir do zero. So let's consider we're going to draw from the zero. Vou mudar aqui de caneta, porque elas não veem, certo? Let's, let's draw from the, from the zero. Let's consider our shape will be drawn from the zero. So this will be the zero. And I'm going to go, for the sake of simplicity right now, I'm going to do 200 shapes. So minus, 200, minus 100. No, I'm going to do 100 shapes. So minus 500. Minus 50, sorry, minus 50 and plus 50. Because in the end, I just take out the zero and it's 0 0.05. And 
minus 0 0.05. So this will give you a, a visual shape on the screen. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to go so zero uh, minus 50 and zero. So it's in the zero. So this will be the new zero. I'm going to the left. And then I'm going to the top. So zero minus 50. 50, zero, zero, 50. Aha, é confuso, não é? Ok. Vamos lá ver. Num desenho normal, aqui é o zero, aqui é o 100. Aqui é o zero, aqui é o 100. O que significa que este ponto, quanto é que é? Tem 100. Mas eu estou a desenhar agora assim. Uh... Vou desenhar agora assim. Isto é o zero. Imaginem. Isto é o menos 50. Isto é o mais 50. Isto é o menos 50. Isto é o mais 50. Portanto, imaginem. Este ponto. Falei. Menos 25, menos 25. You just have, don't worry, I always draw it because I always get it wrong. Last time I did this, of course it was wrong. So when I always draw it, don't worry if you get it wrong, just draw it and try to figure out. You'll get used to it eventually. So always X and then Y. If you use the normal coordinate system, you know that upwards is negative, downwards is positive, left is negative, right is positive. You can actually change this if you want to. I don't recommend, but okay. So we're just going to draw a diamond shape, the simplest one we can draw. So let's just draw a diamond shape. And we're actually going to say no stroke because I don't like the, the default look of it. And we're just going to say fill, I like 40. And then let's just say begin a shape. And the first point, like we said, is going to be minus 50, 0, minus 50, 0. The second point is going to be 0 minus 50. 0 minus 50. The third point is going to be 50, 0. Desculpe, já tinha, já fundi fuzil. 0. The third point is going to be 0, 50. And then you close it because it's only four points. When you press play, Something went wrong. Mesmo? This. Ah, eu mudei isto, eu mudei teclado, desculpa. É. É, agora está no sítio certo. Ah, pronto. Alto okay. é, alto X. Não, ok, Estavas okay, okay. com o teclado em americano. So, something went wrong or did it? Aha. We didn't tell the computer that the zero was not here. So it's actually drawing the zero over here and then doing the polygon here. So I'm, I'm going to show you. I'm, 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 I told you I'm gonna, I was going to pack a lot of information. So I'm going to show you that the zero is here, but there's a cool way to, for to tell processing to move the origin, to change the origin of the drawing. I'm going to change the origin of the drawing to the middle of the screen using the transform matrix. So let's go to reference. Or just, I'm just doing this because, yeah, this one I know. It's just going to translate. So we're going to just change. This operation is called matrix transforms. I'll show it to you in more depth. But if you you go to transform and you see translate, rotate, uh, lock, hot scale, translate, rotate, and scale, always by this order, lock, hot scale, like in 3D. Uh, so translate actually moves the, the center of the origin of the drawing to another place. So if we want to change the origin of the drawing to the middle of the screen, oh, what was the size of the screen? I don't really need to know. No, please saber. We just say, OK, on draw, we say, set up the size is 400. So let's translate 
Well, if the size is the width, let's do width times slash two height slash two. So this is another reserved words. When you say width, the computer assumes that it's half uh, the width is the, the width of the window, the screen window, uh, the application window. So you don't actually need to always to remember what was the size of it because the yeah it 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 remembers. So right now, uh, missing yeah, missing a semicolon yeah. Right now, uh, hmm, didn't work. Sorry. Okay, no. Uh, this one I didn't know. It doesn't remember. Uh, so I I changed the origin of the screen to here. And I told it to to start drawing it. Yeah, it should be here. Yeah. Okay. So now it's drawing from the center out. Uh, yeah, pay, pay close attention to this one because uh, yeah, we're gonna change this one also. So I'm just telling you that we're gonna draw from the zero, and this changes. Of the zero. Okay, so another cool thing to do is edit uh, auto format. And it just tidies up the code. Now it's easier to read. Okay, um, so right now we have this shape that gets drawn from a virtual zero outwards, and we have this thing that changes the coordinates. So if we have this, let's let's think with me for for a while. I'm I'm gonna change. I'm gonna do one tile, two tile, three tile, three, and then I'm gonna rotate it, and I'm gonna make it bigger. I'm gonna make it smaller. Yeah, wouldn't it be nice if I just have like a robot that says, "Give me a tile," and then it just draws this? Let's connect things again. I told you that computer functions are blocks of code, are instructions that you change. So whenever you ask for draw, it gets this done. Guess what? I want to draw a tile. I'm going to ask for a tile. So I'm just going to say, instead of saying everything, I'm going to do a save. What does it save as? No. I will do uh, custom functions, custom functions. Okay. You can actually define your own function. So I'm going to pick up this code. I'm going to cut it, cut uh, to the memory, copy, cut. I'm going to say, whenever I want to say, I want to call this specific tiling function, I'm going to say, give me a tile. And the computer says, hmm, don't think so. Okay, it doesn't know what a tile is. Notice that the computer is saying the function tile does not exist. Well, if the function tile does not exist, why don't I create a function tile? So I'm going to tell the computer void function, oh, sorry, void tile. I'm going to tell when the, someone calls for tile, this is what you do. So tile open and close. And now paste the code there. Tens razão nesta linguagem não. Ele faz function hoisting. Sim, acho que sim. Pensar nesse bocadinho. Porque, porque o computador, isto é uma linguagem que é compilada e interpretada ao mesmo tempo. Portanto, ele faz uma pré-análise antes de compilar o código e ele reorganiza o código de uma forma mais lógica, porque as funções vão para o sítio certo. Ele, antes de ver a função ser chamada, ele já sabe o que é que é. Sim, sim. Uh, so, what happened here is the computer didn't know what tile was. And what we said is, when someone calls for tile, this is what tile does. And the computer, it's like, an, é como, isto é como se fosse um, um atalho. No computador, quando fazemos um atalho, quando chegares aqui, salta para ali e volta para trás. Portanto, when it reaches this point, it actually, the computer says, start drawing, paint the background, whoa, what's this? Go here. Do the, 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 and then continue, stop. So it's like a shortcut where it jumps, a hyper, it's like a, 
como é que se chama um buraco negro? Uh, black hole in space, where it jumps into hyperspace and comes out in the other side. Okay? So it just get, comes here, runs everything, and goes back. So it's kind of complicated to do this, just to do this thing. But now we have, we're going to have fun with it because, yeah. How do we have fun with this? For example, wouldn't it be nice if I could just call the tile and place it wherever the mouse is? Okay. It's called parameters. Remember the, the ellipse or the, remember the ellipse? We said ellipse, ellipse, and we said like 50, 100. So these are the parameters X and Y for the ellipse. So you call something and you tell it to go there. Let's do the same with a tile. Call a tile and tell it to go to, for example, 100, 200. So I'm going to tell. call a custom function, pass the X and Y location, new location. Guess what? This will be X 100. This will be Y 100. It's like a socket and the motomada, plug in the socket. When you have something without pegs, okay, disconnects. But now I'm gonna put a peg here. Now it's like this. Yeah, it, it tries to fit, but it doesn't fit. So it has to have like a connector. So now it fits. So whenever you call a parameter here, you have to have a parameter here. X. Remember the variables? The computer is expecting to receive an integer value. And I call it X. I, this is me. I call it underscore x to know that this is not a variable. It's like it comes as a parameter. It's it's being fed to me. Like, it's like, integument p1, p2, parameter one, parameter two. Doesn't make any sense. Now it's easier for me to just call it like this. So instead of changing it to the middle, I'm changing it into the new 100. So 100 gets fed into x, and x gets placed over here. See the logic? In the now. I told you I was going to pack a lot of information. It's some pack, no, when I was all, then I paid quatro aulas in LSE. Okay. So we call tile and they say, give me a tile and here's the value of x 100. So whenever you draw tile, you get the new number place it into a variable and use the variable. So now it moved to the left. So instead of just feeding an, a regular number, just feed it the mouse. <laughs> and now it moves, mouse x. So now, uh, hmm. no, it's, not, it's not looping, sorry, it's not looping. So just, put the mouse inside of tile and draw a tile and draw a tile on X, on the mouse X. And the mouse X gets separated, the tile gets separated, right? This way. Gente, vocês não sejam minhas You're my guinea pigs. I never, did, I never did this workshop as fast as I'm doing today. Sim? Eu garanto que vocês perceberem isto, vocês vão estar a milhas vossos colegas. Sim? Professor, posso lhe fazer Sim. uma pergunta? Claro, claro. Uh, perdão, deixa-me só Ele diz-me que. Ok, ele diz-me no Void Tile, ele diz-me que o meu X não está a ser utilizado. Uh... O meu underscore X, ele diz que não está a ser utilizado. Tu eu caste isto? Não há, pro... não há problema em não utilizares, não há problema, só não utilizaste. Estás a definir uma variável e depois não utilizas. Portanto, o valor que tu pões aqui, é... o 100. Certo, Laura? Ai, não pusei em baixo. Sim, sim, sim. Vem daqui e quando ele é chamado, ele vem para aqui, certo? Portanto, este tem sim. está aqui, está nesta variável. Ele vem para aqui para dentro, certo? Este okay. valor vem para aqui. De acordo? Ok. 
Portanto, de acordo. a ideia é utilizar este novo X. E agora, quando queres, podes pôr aqui, podes pôr aqui, podes pôr onde quiseres. Ok. E quando eu puser aí, ele vai deixar de estar link para baixo. Estou a assumir. Sim. Ok, sim. Tá. Não tinha feito isso. Está bem. Tá. E agora, se mudar Obrigada. este número para um número dinâmico, ele fica dinâmico. Ok. Ok, ok. Vou fazer isso. Tá. Ok. Isto é para explicar. This is to explain that when you call a function... You, you, can have, you can actually have custom shapes, custom instructions, custom tasks done in functions. So you just call a function, it does a group of things. So the fun of this is that, like you probably are seeing right now, I'm going to draw one, two, three, one smaller, one bigger, one rotated. So I'm just going to call the tile and say, tile, new position to the right. Tile, new position, bigger. Tile. So we're going to call the tile and tell it, Rotate, grow, scale. Okay, so it's, it's still going to take a while. It's still going to take like half an hour. So bear with me for a while. Um, mas se tudo correu bem, daqui a meia hora temos o workshop feito dentro das horas. Okay, uh, so right now we have call a tile with one number. So for example, 100. 100 gets into X. So let's call it another number, 200. Guess what? Int Y. Uh, porque eu sou um esquisito. Isto é o nome de uma variável. As variáveis têm que começar por um... So, it's a variable. Variables have to start with a letter. Well, actually, underscore, it counts as a letter. You cannot start it with a number. And the underscore is just for me to remember that it's a parameter. It's, that's like, it's like a door. It's going through under the door. And it's not a full global variable. or It's, it's a variable only for this uh, function. Uh, you can name it whatever you want here, okay? Se, for, se quiseres, pode ser param x. Oh. Não, pode ser, pode ser aqui, pode chamar-lhe new y. It, this name only has to be compatible where you use it, okay? You, you might want to find your own uh, uh, rules of naming variables and parameters. Uh, like I told you, you... Back in the day, I used to call this P1, P2. I need to start getting very confused very fast. Now I just call it underscore. It's a rule for myself. I know that underscore are parameters and camel case is variables. Uh, so I just call it underscore Y because I know it's being fed by the main program into this custom function. So translate X, Y. So yeah, the new drawing gets 100, 200. If I get it, mouse x mouse y it gets drawn where the mouse is okay so notice that i haven't changed the way i draw the the, the diamond shape or where i draw the diamond shape I, i'm just changing the parameters or the variables where it's being drawn so the, the shape is getting always drawn the same way so Let's guess what? I have an X, I have a Y. Wouldn't it be nice to change the size of this thing? Let's go into lock. Uh, uh, okay, sorry, lock hot scale. Uh, this is lock. Lock. Location. This will be hot. I'll leave hot for later. And this will be scale. Okay? Always do it by this order. Location, rotation, and scale. And... Yeah, well, uh, the scaling function, this will produce an error. It will be fun, but it will be, it will be useful to explain the, 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 what it's doing. Custom functions, let's transform matrix. Transform matrix, yes. Okay, so I'm telling it to be X. Y, and now I'm going to tell it to be big, just one number, because it's going to be a square, remember? So the size equals the, the height, just one number, it's going to be the scale. So the scale is going to be, I'm using 100 pixels, minus 50 to 50, so I'm going to tell it to be, I don't know, uh, I'm going to change between 100 and 200, so I'm going to tell it to be 2. So 
what happens is the scaling i'm going to do scale and well x x y y two hmm, i'm going to use strange numbers but i better use a float i'm going to use 2.0 so i'm going to use loads underscore s or scale or size so give me a new position x x give me a new position y y give me a new size scalarize size so i'm gonna do s so i want you to play close close attention because it's gonna go bad really fast play and uh no it didn't went bad why didn't it go bad i have no clue why it didn't go bad but it should have gone bad uh, okay okay if i press scale times two it gets bigger if i guess press scale 0 0.5 it goes smaller by a factor of half so guess what this is multiplying numbers so i get it 50 pixels 100 pixels times two well let's go back to our initial idea what if instead of using actual numbers here i use relative numbers so this will be a hundred percent minus 0 0.5 and plus 0 0.5 and then because it's between zero and one and multiply it by the final size That's so 100% de 30 centímetros. São 30 centímetros. Agora adivinha lá quanto é que é 50% de 30 centímetros. 30 centímetros. Toda a gente sabe fazer estas contas, caralho. <laughs> Everybody should be able to do this kind of math. <laughs> okay? Uh, so, the idea is, let's... We're, we're slowly changing our drawing into the final shape. So, instead of using actual absolute values we're going to use relative values percentual values so we're going to change this into minus dot five or 0 0.5 if you want minus 0 0.5 0 0.5 0 0.5 don't worry if it's 0 0.50 it's the same if you remember your math class and you can actually do it like this and it ignores the white space okay of course if you do auto format then it goes all the way back Problem is that if now if you press play, it's really, really small. It's behind my mouse and you don't see it because it's like less than a pixel. So what you want to do right now is saying, my drawing is between zero and one and you multiply the scale by the size that you want it to be. So instead of just doing geometric scaling, you do absolute scaling. Does it make sense? Estávamos a desenhar de forma absoluta e a multiplicar geometricamente. Agora vamos desenhar de forma relativa e a multiplicar por valores absolutos. Sim? É só dizer que aqui, em vez de ser um tamanho relativo, em vez de ser metade, o dobro, o triplo, aqui vou dizer eu quero isto por 300 pixels. E now it just gives me the absolute size I want it to be. So, 300 pixels, done. So 150 pixels, done, okay? So it, it will actually draw me the size of the tile. Tens, põe 200, o que é que está bom? Aí. Está, está bem? Mudaste aqui um ponto mal, provavelmente. Não precisa, isso acontece sempre isto. O desenho em si não interessa, podes desenhar o que quiseres, não é? Tipo, é um erro no desenho qualquer. 
menos, menos zero. Não, esse está a 0.5. O meu está menos, menos, menos 0.50. Eu tenho 0.5. O segundo está a 0, menos 0.05. Este é 0. Primeiro. Ah, ok. Ah. É, a, 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 a mim acontece todos os dias. E sempre faço isto agora com isso. Vai alterar aquilo que eu tenho. Depois é aqui, desculpa. Mas é indiferente mudar esse valor aqui, esse valor aqui, esse aqui, esse aqui que eu tenho. Não, este, este desenho agora está a ser feito em escala. Em, em vez de estar a fazer grande, estamos a fazer muito pequenino, com um pixel de unidade. Porque aqui está bem pequeno, foi? Fica com 20 pixels. Se puseres 200, eu fiquei com 200 pixels. Porque estás a usar o scale para transformar o desenho para 200 pixels. Ou seja, entre 0 e 100%. De 200. Não? Ou seja, o desenho em si, imagina que é um Illustrator, que em vez de ter centímetros, tens portanto, a régua em percentagem. E o que acontece no Illustrator? Tu depois fazes o scale do desenho. Tens esta folha, mas depois queres pôr num outdoor. Tu... É literalmente a mesma coisa que acontece no Illustrator. Porque o Illustrator é vetorial, aquilo na realidade são números... Portanto, a diferença é que estamos a desenhar entre 0 e 100. Ok. <risos> e a partir do centro? Sim, mas no dia em que percebes isto, o 3D vai ser tão simples para ti. Porque o 3D trabalha assim, e o 3D trabalha com a referência global e a referência do objeto. Não, isto vai ajudar imenso a próxima, a próxima etapa. Uh, aqui está tudo bem. Onde é que está o Ok, ok. Então vamos lá. Uh, nós estávamos a desenhar, estávamos perdidos. Tirar uh, o E agora fui eu que me enganei, não é? O 0,11. 0,5. Está a ver? Ok. Portanto, o que acontece aqui é que temos a desenhar uma forma que não tem tamanho, é entre 0 e 100%, não tem tamanho. E nós dizemos, é 100% de 200 pixels. E ela faz este, faz este desenho. Portanto, o que nós estamos aqui agora a fazer uh, com o transform. Ah, pá, nós estamos mesmo, mesmo, mesmo a acabar. Uh, a, parte, a parte mais chata. Que é, aprendemos a desenhar formas e aprendemos assim a formas independentes. Agora o nosso problema é, como é que nós desenhamos muitas? Vamos entrar na terceira parte do, do workshop. <risos> Portanto, save, e agora vamos fazer, stop, uh, save, uh, shift save, e vamos fazer agora o que se chama um loop. Ora bem, eu vou, eu vou, se quiserem abrir só um sketch novo, só para, só para, eu vou fazer uma explicação um bocadinho à parte, so I'm gonna, uh, sorry, uh, I was talking in Portuguese. Uh, I'm going to do a side explanation. If you want to keep this sketch open, just open a new sketch. Uh, I'm, I'm going to explain the, a loop. Uh, so, when you want to tell the computer to do one thing, you could say ellipse once, and it's got 100, 100, 10, 10. And then we want to do another one, and it'll go 20. And we want to do another one, 30. Okay, this will be fine and dandy up until four or five, and you can actually do this. It's pretty stupid, but if you want to do two thousands by two thousands, it's probably not feasible. So this is where the computer does things better than us. So the computer is good at working with big numbers. So let's just say, I want to say, I give 10 ellipses. Instead of drawing, Ellipse 1, ellipse 2, ellipse 3, ellipse 4, ellipse 5, 10. And then someone tells me, ah, mas eu quero 12. Ah, fala, ah, sério. Ok. We can do what's called a loop. So we tell the computer, computer, start counting with one hand a variable. And this hand starts with zero, no fingers on it, and counts until five, and starts counting from zero upwards. Zero, one, two, three, four. Full hand. So 
Whenever you count zero, one, two, three, four, give me an ellipse. Ellipse zero, ellipse one, ellipse two, ellipse three, ellipse four. Five ellipses. So let's ask the computer to do this. Four. Whenever you open something, you close it. Right? Remember? The four gives me a loop. Four. And it says, while something inside of here is running, is true. And you say, give me a variable, integ integer i. We usually call it, when you see the examples, you see the integer i, because i is called the iterator, the I iterator, 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 the number that goes loop. Number i equals zero. So start counting from zero. É como jogar as apanhadas. Like when you play, nós dizemos macaquinho chinês. What do you call it in English? Uh, the Chinese monkey. When you say, when you say, I don't know how to call it. When you say, there's a child again when you, when you, hide and seek, uh, hide and seek and you count it. I, exactly. Oh, that's condiz, that's condiz, that's condiz. See, when you go play, when you go play hide and seek and you just turn to the wall and say, start counting up until a hundred. You go one, two, three. So it's the same. Start counting from zero to a hundred. So start counting from zero, semicolon, while zero is smaller than 10, 100, 100, 1000. And whenever you count, do something, add a number, do something, add a number, do something. So zero, do an ellipse. One, do an ellipse. Two, do an ellipse. So whenever you count and you do something here, do something here. Do something and then it goes up and says, I equals one, it's smaller than 10, do again. I equals two, smaller than 10. But you have to tell it whenever you do go around, you have to change the number. So start with zero, when you finish, go to one, when you finish, go to two, when you finish, go to three, all the way while it's smaller than 10. So start with zero while it's smaller than 10. And whenever you do something, I equals I plus one. So it just tells while the number I is less than 10, you do something. Start with zero and whenever you do it, do plus one. I one, I two, I three, I four, I five, I 10, whoops, don't do it. It's already bigger than 10. Okay, so. Do something. Well, let's do an ellipse. And we do the same thing. 10, 10, 10, 10. Uh, if we do this, well, it's actually doing 10 ellipses, but it's doing the ellipse always in the same place. It's stupid, right? Why don't we change the ellipse in position? For example, I don't know. Translate. It's the first time I've seen this. Hi. So, when the I is zero, the translate moves zero. When the I is one, the translate moves one. When the I is two, the translate moves two. So, whenever you press play, the missing semicolon, oh, sorry. It just pushes everything to the right. Okay, it's got a thing to happen. Tá? Then to translate mesh origin. Translate moves the origin. So it starts with origin zero. And now there's something wrong with it. It starts with the origin zero. Notice that it looks it looks like it's speeding up. It's going faster. So because it's the i, the i equals one. So in the, the i equals zero, the zero is over here. So the, the ellipse is over there in 10. So when the i equals one, it moves the origin to the right. So the 10 gets to 11. But now it's already one. When the i equals two, 
the translate was already done because we're not redrawing everything again. The matrix transformations are, uh, while in the draw loop, the matrix transformations are cumulative. So well, well, the I equals two, so it actually goes to three, I equals four, it goes to seven because it's adding up numbers. So here it's important to notice that when you use the transform, if it's in the same instruction, it's in the same group of instructions, if it's in the same draw, you have to do something called push matrix. And when you stop drawing, pop matrix. So the push matrix saves the coordinate system. And the pop matrix restores the original states. So it goes back to the place it was. So now if we want to do this, now it moves linearly. One, 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 one. Yeah, but I want to move faster. Yeah, just multiply it. I times 20. Okay. Or 12, 11, yeah, to have a pic uh, pixel interval. Okay. So uh, it, this is just a sidebar, a very fast sidebar <laughs> to explain it to you. Sorry about being so rough. Oh, gente, se vocês não vão estudar, hein, meu? Ela assim vai ser muito fácil. Tá? Uh, I'm, I'm just using this sidebar to explain. The for loop is a command that repeats itself. So it runs everything inside of it. It doesn't come out of it until it's done. Start in zero. It continues to running while it's smaller than 10. And whenever you go rounds, whenever you do everything, add one. So i equals zero, i equals one. So now you just use the i to draw, translate one or translate one times 10. So i equals zero times 10, zero. i equals one times 10, 10. i equals two times 10, 20. So it, it's moving 10 pixels at a time. So you just use a scalar function just to, to move it. So very fast drawing, just to, a very fast sketch just to uh, explain loops and um, of course, because we're using translate, I have to explain this matrix thing. So let's just take this, everything we're doing here and apply to our drawing. So let's put it on this side and say, okay, I want to draw a tile, but now I want to, instead of drawing one tile, I want to draw 10 tiles, right? So mm, call a custom function 10 times. So let's just do a four call a loop for we have the, the code over here just be careful Ninas just be careful eu abri aqui código aberto we open the curly bracket over here and we close the curly bracket in the end of the drawing so the end of the drawing for us is going to be the tile operation so we're going to close the curly bracket here so the four will enclose a whole tile. And now we have to decide whether to put the push matrix here or put the push matrix here. Notice that I'm already using the translate over here. So instead of running everything, so the code gets executed here, it jumps here. So I can actually say, okay, push matrix over here. The translate, aha, I have a number, uh, an iterator. The translate, uh, yeah, the translate is gonna be the X and the Y. So I have to translate to I. So let me guess, I translate. So hmm, just pick up this one and put it over here times, I don't know, 100 or 50. Just let's, let's call it 50. And uh, the y is going to be zero because it's going to be zero zero, or it's going to be 
yeah, it's gonna be width. It's no, don't worry, don't worry. Okay, it's gonna be height. Height times two. Okay. And the size of it is gonna be forty-five. Guess what? I'm translating fifty pixels. So the size of it has to be slightly smaller for it to have a gap or not. It can be 50 and it doesn't have gaps. So it's like tiles, 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 tiles. And in the end, we have to pop the matrix to restore the original position. Copy, that's pop, push matrix, lock, hot, tail, drawing, and pop matrix. So if I'm getting, um, I'll just get it slightly smaller for it to fit on screen. Maybe I can take the comments from here. Okay, the full tiling function is over here. So push matrix. So when you call the tiling function, you call it with a position. Push matrix translates to the new position, scale to the new size, and then the end pop matrix. So it's exactly the same, but we're putting the push and the, the transformations inside the drawing. And the loop is calling 10 times like we did. The trick is instead of translation, translating inside the loop, I'm just telling it the value of what I want to translate. So I want to say I times the, the new size of it. Yeah. Okay, so it starts in zero. 50 and the size is 50. So you can actually play with this. 45 will give me a gap. Or if I can play with it and it will give me 55 or 60, it will have overlap. Because the spacing, the spacing of the square, the space it occupies, it's different because between uh, the, 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 the slot is smaller than the size of the square. So it will get overlap. But for our example, let's just say it's 50 for it to connect. Okay. See? I'm going to have you. But that's what I'm saying. At this altura, I think I'm going to lose a lot of in Zoom, but I don't know if I'm going to lose a lot of but OK. Uh, so now we have a, a, a loop six here. Okay, so it, you can actually play with this. We can play with, with five. It starts in five, it goes all the way, because it's starting in zero, okay? We can change this later, but we're just starting from the, from the left of the screen to the right. Uh, we can have it 50, we can have whatever we want it to be. We're, we're gonna actually make this modular to the size of the screen. So we have it running 10 times all the way to the right. So actually the screen should be like 500 by 500 and it will fit all the tiles. So it almost, there's something wrong over here. So what happens is I'm doing the zero from the left. So what, what I have to do is to have some sort of margin, some sort of offset that can take the drawing. So let's just say, I'm going to say int offset x. And I'm going to say offset x equals. I'm just going to say 25 because I know it's half times 50. I'm going to place everything into variables in the final section of the program. And, and I'm going to say my offset. So I'm going to say translate x plus offset. So I'm always moving to the right, but I have to add the margin. So right now it just touches everything, right? Okay, so it's like a, sl a small margin. I push everything to the right. 
I can actually, if, you, if this is too confusing for you, I can do truth translates, like translate. And then a second translate to the new position. Okay. If this is too confusing, just do this and it will work also. Two operations, it's the same thing, okay? First move the margins and then move each square to its correct place. So move a little bit to the right, put it here. Move a little bit to the right, put it here. Move a little bit to the right, put it there. Move a little bit to the right, put it there. Always like this, okay? It's what the computer is saying. So right now, <laughs> I have a, a, a line of squares, but I want one, two, three, four. So I actually want one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. So I want one, two, three, four, five of one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. So I want to do what's called a nested loop. It's a loop inside another loop, right? Yeah. Do once to the right. And every time we do to the right, you go forward, move to the right, move forward, move to the right. So you're actually doing two loops. Save, do a save, and it's called a nested loop. It's called into 12 nested loops. So call a custom function 10 times equals one line. And now I want it to be lots of lines. Give me more lines. So uh, it's moving to the right. Notice that this will be kind of awkward. I'm going to work backwards. I'm going to use the horizontal. It's I. So it's moving to the right. Now I want it to move one, two. So I'm going to do a loop that does. And for each one, right? Equals online. So this will be in closing loop to produce an x lines to produce produce right so this thing is the nested loop and this one is the enclosing loop okay notice i'm i'm highlighting the code for you to see i'm going to put this one inside a new loop. So I'm just going to write here for, and I'm going to close it here. Remember? You can do it either way. Just choose your way. Then please pay attention to what you're doing. And now, because I already have a loop within a variable called i, I cannot use the same variable because it's all in the same code block. So I have to change the number of the, the name of the variable. Usually people use i and j. I'm going to use i and k because sometimes you don't see it on the screen. It's easier to see the difference between i and k. So I'm going to say int k equals 0, k under 10, k plus plus. What? What's this? k plus plus, it's the same as saying k equals k plus 1. This is so common in using programming that you have short notation for it. K, K plus plus just says K equals K plus one. Okay, so you're gonna see it a lot. So you better get used to it. This one is the same as this one. If you wanna get really confused, it's the same as this one. Oops, sorry. K plus equals one. So it's so you use it so many times that people use short notation for it. So I'm just gonna show it to you because you, when you see the example, it just says K plus plus or I plus plus. So I plus plus, K plus plus, I plus plus or K plus plus equals K equals. K equals K plus one. So you have this, an enclosing loop, an enclosing loop 
here. Beware where you close things. Usually, sometimes I do this. I, I write myself saying where it starts and stops. For you to see, okay? In closing loop, nested loop. Okay. Closing loop, end of nested loop, end of enclosing loop. So it's it's running X amount of lines. Each line has X amount of cells or columns. Okay. So now that I'm running one loop and then the other loop, I just yeah, well, why don't I just tell K times 50? <laughs> because K is the vertical direction, I is the horizontal direction, and just just tell it start one, two, three, four, five, move down, one, two, three, four, five, move down, one, two, three, four, five, move down. Right? So it goes to the right, to the right, to the right, to the right. Move down to the right, to the right, to the right, to the right. Move down. So it's just going 10 times. K plus one, 10 times. K plus two, 10 times. So it's like, and you can do this like a lot of times. You can do like triple loops. And I don't really encourage you because the computer will get stuck. But this is now really powerful. Ta -da. So you just go one, two, three, four, five, ten. One, two, three, four, five, ten. One, two, three, four, and it's just moving. I plus one, I plus two, I plus three, I plus four, I plus five, K plus one. Down. I plus one, two, three, four, five, K plus two. One, two, three, four, five, K plus three. One, two, three, four. Just, it's just order of operations. Okay, it's just for you say. Okay, uh, so final thing is that you can actually can say offset x, offset y, and you just can can actually say here, yeah. and this gets. Uh, I, I have to use it now again uh, on the translate here. Now, like this drawing is aligned with my computer system. So I just offset margins and then I draw the loops. Offset margin, draw the loops. Okay. So finally, see, see, vamos ver como é que está tudo em casa. Ok. Como é que está o chat? Chat, 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 chat. Está tudo ok? Então, ok. Então não vou, não vou chatear com isto. Ok. So we're gonna do. Now we did. I'm sorry, and did the next loops. Okay, so right now we're almost ready. We're really, really close, really close to the end, and it's about time because I I planned half an hour to do to plan the recursion, but we can do different stuff. So now we have we learned how to do a relative drawing and place it in an absolute space with an absolute size. So right now, uh, I'm going to tell it like this. Um, remember, remember uh, the Trochet tiles? Uh, remember the, the first example I showed you from Trochet tiles? You had a rule. You had a rule where some drawings were drawn upwards and some drawings were down, drawn downwards, right? Like this column gets drawn upwards, that one gets drawn down, upwards, down. Let's play with this. There's a, a really cool special function in, in math called, ah, uh, eu esqueci como é que se chama. É o módulo, mas eu tenho outro nome na realidade. I forgot the real name. It, it, I, I always call it module, but I guess they call it another thing. Uh, I don't know what it's called really. It's called processing called its module, mod, model. Uh, and this is really fun. When you divide a number, for example, you divide uh, four by two, the rest is two. But if you divide four by four, the rest is four. So what this does is it uses the remainder to, to 
to calculate uh, the modules, to calculate the, the number of things. So uh, you can actually say a number module four, so one, two, three are always module zero because it's not reached four. When you reach four, the module is one because the re you divide it four by four and you get it once, div the divisor once, and the, the remainder is zero. Five, six, seven, module is one, then you have the remainder and stuff like this. And it's when it reaches eight, the module is two. So you can actually use, you can actually calculate multiples. And this is very fun because you can actually use the module to calculate a number, module, modulo, dois, modulo, 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 modulus. I don't know the, the, the remainder of, of the division by two always gives you either uh, an odd or an even number. Dá-vos sempre um número para o ímpar. Portanto, nós sabemos sempre Estou à esquerda, estou à direita, no nosso conjunto de regras, usando o módulo. Módulo 2 diz-me sempre que o 1 é ímpar, o 2 dá 0, a divisão é par. O 3 dá ímpar, o 4, a divisão dá 0, dá par. So, what we're going to use is module 2 to know even and odd rows of numbers. So, bear with me for a while. I'm, I'm going to use this special function math function to discover if the line is even or odd. And if it's even, I'm going to paint it red. And if it's odd, I'm going to paint it black. OK? So let's do it like this. Uh, let's do it like this. Remember the fill color? I want to change programmatically the fill color, but I, I don't want to change it here. So whenever, whenever I want to change a drawing and keep it dynamic, I use a variable. So guess what? Tile color. And the computer says, I don't know what tile color is. I'll tell you what tile color is. So I'll just say color, tile color. Color is actually a number, uh, a color number that, that we can use. So tile color will be defined as color and give it the RGB. So I'll just give it 40, 40, 40, right? Guess what? When the I module two is even, uh, sorry, when uh, module two is uh, equal zero, the tail color is gonna be red, else, so what we're going to create here is an if statement. We're going to create a condition. And this will finish the whole set of computer program, basic computer program, I promise you. So what we're going to do here is say, OK. Uh, we're going to create a condition. Ah, let's go back to save. Uh, nested loops. If conditions. Okay. Create a condition. A condition says if something equals true, then I'm just gonna I'm just gonna state here. Then do something. Okay. Else do other thing, do another thing, okay? So this is an if condition. So what you're gonna do is say, if I, so the horizontal position, modulo two equals zero, I'm using a special kind of equal, remember, because when you say, variable equal color you're assigning you're saying this is color so what you're saying here is if this is equal is equal is equal so one equal is two equal is equal if this is equal to zero then style color equals color that's this senhoras senhores temos a primeira distância Okay, so what will happen now is that they will run the first 
dá-lhe uma, dá uma porrada. Ah, e eu começo a espinha toda, foram as variáveis, dá-lhe. Uh, if tal equal scholar, uh, sorry, if equal uh, module 2, uh, the color will be red. The problem is that I starts with zero, so module 2 will be zero. So when you do this, it will be all red, okay? So now you have to say else, if it's not zero, in qualquer outra condição, dizemos que é outra coisa. Any other condition, it's either, be, it's, it's either going to be uh, zero or not. The condition is going to be 40. So now the even numbers is going to be red and the odd numbers are going to be black. So save and ta -da. Sim. Uh, pode. Não, 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 não. Eu, eu posso usar a exercício sim, sim, sim. Porque na realidade isso é um número grande, o que é que a está a dizer que é um número grande. E pronto, a cor é um número, basicamente é isso. Ok? So what we're doing here is actually saying change the color according to the to the to the to the variable but we could say another thing we could say if you're gonna if it's even now it's the fun part of it let's go back to the shit remember to share like i was telling you some of these tiles are going upwards some are going downwards so if we actually say, what if our tile, instead of having one tile, we have two tiles. Instead of having one tile, we could have, and now we can have fun with Trichet tiles. Instead of having one tile, we could actually have this tile going upwards, and then another tile going downwards. Well, um, isn't this one just rotated? Yeah, well, probably not really the same, but we can play with it. I'm just gonna draw one tile and I'm gonna play with the rotation. Okay? Because I, I'm, we're still missing the rotation. Okay? So this tile gets drawn Let's let's change the drawing of the tile. So pode ser a minha não sei o que é que é mais fácil fazer, desculpem. Querem manter o desenho do, do azulejo, querem ficar com o losango, podemos mudá-lo. Can I change the, the losango? Okay, let's change that. let's just change it. So the new the new drawing is gonna be so we have zero zero here. The new drawing is going to be so imagine that this is uh point twenty five. And 0.5, and this is minus, and this is minus, uh, minus 0.25, and this is going to be minus 0.25 and 0.25, uh, sorry, 0.5, 0.5, and uh, minus 0.5, and minus 0.5. Okay, so this is going to be my new drawing. Uh, so I'm just, just going to say minus 0.25 and plus, desculpe, plus point, plus, oh, meu, tudo trocado, plus 20, 0.25 minus 0.5, uh, my, uh, plus 0.5 and minus 0.5. Minus point twenty five, minus point twenty five, five, and minus minus five and five. So this will be my new drawing. Uh, claro que eu fiz a em qualquer lado. 
better use zeros. Get this everything right. Okay, can put it like this to see it better. Okay. Okay, so this is, well, well it's kind of thin, but it's okay. So what happens is when I, the reds are going up, I want the blacks to go down. So instead of doing a new drawing, I can actually rotate the tile because it's just one tile. So let's finalize our drawing by saying, okay, if it's actually red, but can we rotate it? So let's just say, Rotation equals zero and rotation equals 90 degrees. Let's just turn 90 degrees. So right now I have to explain something to you. Uh, we can use degrees, of course, but let's use native uh, measurements in processing. Rotation is something really complicated, uh, <laughs> mathematically speaking, uh, because you want to you wanna rotate by a certain amount. So this is zero. And the computer, while processing, processes rotation like this, clockwise from here. OK? This bit. Master of fuel. Uh, okay. Now, aqui some fuel. Fuel, parentheses, fuel, parentheses. And now, variable. cor. No, if. Ah, no, if. Tab color. Esqueças é que estás a pintar também o fundo. Error voice. Normalmente o erro está em cima. Agora vai para cima. Está aqui, falta um ponto e vírgula. <risos> ok. Ele às vezes, o erro, a detecção de erro não é. Normalmente é procuras na linha ou na linha anterior. Ok. So uh, let's go back to our explanation. We're going to do rotation. So we're going to, when we, we have something like this and we want it, want it to tumble by 90 degrees. So it was like this. I want it to tumble like this. So it will be uh, like this. It will have a problem over here, but we'll deal with it later. Okay. So the idea is to rotate it by 90 degrees. We can actually use degrees, but I'm taking this ex uh, opportunity to explain the, the native measurement of, of the, the angles in computation. It's more, ah, okay. it's easier to explain. It's called radians. It's not, it's not a big deal. If you remember your math, a, a full circumference is like two times radius, uh, two times, two times Pierre, two times Pierre, two times P times R. So the R is the radius. So what this means is uh, that the, the, um, the full length is two times pi. So we can actually decompose this expression saying that, well, half of, if this, this expression is the full circle, so just half of it, just half of it is pi. <laughs> Perfect. So actually, So let's consider that R equals one. So equals one, the same. I'm okay. So pi is equal half of it. So actually what this means is that if you want to change 90 degrees, it's like pi two, uh, slash two. So you can actually say that radians are a measurement an abstract measurement instead of using 
degrees, it's using rotations according to pi. Okay. So pi value. So what this means is that the full rotation, 360 degrees equals two pi. It's called, it's an irrational number, but you can actually say 6.28. It's just a thing, it's just a number. Instead of saying 360, yeah, it's like irrational. And it's actually pretty cool because the conferences need infinite detail. So that's why it's called pi, because it's infinite. So can we rotate it? Yes. <laughs> okay. So we can actually say, let's have a new var variable called, um, let's call it a float. I call it TR, temp rotation, equals, well, it's stupid to have an infinite number, but, and because it's an infinite number, the computer already has it, it's called pi times two. So if, it, if it's zero, the rotation equals zero. And if it's, and if it's uh, one, the rotation equals pi times uh, slash two divided by two. Okay, so what this means is that I'm defining a variable and I'm gonna tell it, do a tile in a specific position in a, with a specific rotation, TR, in a specific size. So now I have to say float rotation. And I'll just say lock. Guess what? Rot. Fail. Ta-da. Ah, TR cannot be resolved to a variable. Why not? Because I'm stupid. That's why. Because I defined it in, remember the blocks of code? It's inside a house. It cannot be called outside the house. So I'm stupid. I have to say it like this. Give me a variable outside the house on the same level, it's outside the playground. Now I'll just say TR here. Let's say TR over there. Okay, now I can use it because it's called here. So it's, it sees the, the variable over here. It's in, on the same level. And inside, it, it can see outside, you can see inside, but inside cannot see outside, okay? Display. Ah, now we have, Kind of trichet tiles, not very good trichet tile, but it's pretty good enough. See? Uh, well, the idea now is to, to go recursive, but maybe I can do the recursiveness as an extra sketch and I'll leave it. I'll save it maybe later because I have these guys to, to, to grade and to prepare a class for tomorrow. <laughs> uh, but I, I can try to do a, a video later. I can do the sketch, I'll leave it commented and I can leave the sketch on using recursiveness. I just wanted to show you this. You can actually do this or you can use, I don't know, you can use random rotation if you want to because, and then it will be really crazy. No, we'll viro, viro graus. But you can actually say random pi. <laughs> and it will be crazy. <laughs> okay. Ah, oh, remember this? Okay. Remember remember the thing? Okay, fine. Finalizing. Don't loop. And whenever you want a new one, you loop it. So you just press play. Crazy, crazy, crazy. These ones are good. These are crazy. You don't like it. It don't like it, it don't like it, it don't like it, it don't like it, it don't like it. And that's it. E pronto, e é isso. Uh, ficamos, há uma coisa que eu não fiz ainda, não está a chatear. There's only one thing missing from the, from the stuff. Um, a, a PDF. Uh, do you, you want to export this as a PDF? Nossa composição. You have four, five more minutes to do this thing. So we have our application running here. Whenever you feel like you're, you, you want it to do something, it's good. You can actually save it. So we're going to configure the spacebar key to give me a new composition and the S key to 
export a PDF. Okay, so I told you that we use all the concepts of the foundation concepts. So data, instructions, graphical primitives, loops, conditions. So everything is here. So the foundations is here. Everything you do it, uh, programming you do it with these ingredients. Of course, there are some things more advanced, of course, but these are the base ingredients to do everything. So right now, with only these ingredients, we're gonna do an export. So let's first configure the key press. If the key is spacebar, then you loop. Else, if the key is S, you're gonna do a PDF export. Okay? So let's do pseudocode. If the key is spacebar, loop. Else, if the key is uh, uh, hmm. uh, it's going to be a problem in my in the logic of the program. It's going to export a new drawing, not the one you're seeing. It's going to export a new drawing, but okay. If the key is S, then loop again and save. Well, this is gonna be a, a, a this, this is an issue. This is not correctly made, but at least it will be, be fast enough to explain how to do this. So, so if we do this is if, notice that the key press and this special event that detects the keys. So the computer already knows the key it's being pressed. So if key, because it takes the key press from there, equals spacebar, it'll just press space, okay? So this is not a double comma. This is a single comma, okay? Because double comma is for words, for strings. Single comma is for characters. Only one character, one letter, one key code. If the spacebar is this one, just loop, okay? Else, and we'll do an else here. Else, oh, sorry, else. But we want to do a specific else, else if, again, key equals S. We're going to do a, 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 save, a save operation. So the problem with save operation is that, um, hmm, let me think of for a while. The problem with save operation is that the random is going to go all over again the loop. But let's just ignore this for a second and let's go with it. So. We'll have to no no key press não dá porque o, o key press é sempre um evento único. Ele repete, ele dá o bang várias vezes. Se tu ficares a pressionar o, o sistema operativo dispara várias vezes, é sempre único, só uma tecla de cada vez. Fazes muitas, ele, ele tem uma sequência de milissegundos entre elas. Mas tem lógica. Podias, mas tem lógica, ok. Uh, neste exemplo não dá. Ok. So what what um, Fabio uh, asked is, could you could you do if key press is S and not space bar? This specific example is not good, but it, we could say if key press is S and something is not happening, like the color is not orange. Well, you can actually say and it's called a, a logical a logic operator. And the key is not spacebar. So if the key is S and not spacebar, of course it's gonna. It, this is always going to be true because it's yeah. We press S, it's not a spacebar. But if you, it's called a logic operator. You can do separate ifs if condition one and then if condition two, or you can do a logical operation if both conditions are met. For example, and if the key is spacebar, this condition will never occur because you cannot press S and spacebar at the same time. But you could do if the key is down, and if the key is down is S, and if the key is down is spacebar, because it's being down, they can be pressed at the same time, so they can check if they're both pressed, then you could do it. So the logic you want is this double, double, logical operators so in this case yeah simple one uh, 
and now we actually have to say something. We have to say something to start saving the PDF. So let's create a condition called if the PDF is going to be saved, the PDF, the save PDF true. So we're going to create a variable, save PDF equals true. And it says, okay, I don't know what save PDF is. Oh, I'll tell you, save PDF is a variable. It's either true or false. So when you start, you're not saving. But when you press S, you're going to save. So save PDF is called a special kind of variable. They call a Boolean, either true or false. This is what it says, save PDF. Yeah. Okay. And when save PDF starts, save PDF is not true equals false. So it's not saving. And what we're going to see now, I, I really need to, to go to the cheat, to the cheat guide because I don't remember how to do this. So reference. Um, and what you want to do is search for PDF. But guess what? PDFs are not core processing. So actually, processing has more to it in extension libraries. <laughs> so the core is big enough. <laughs> exactly. But you can actually do a lot of stuff with processing. Processing is my favorite environment because it actually allows you to work with almost everything hardware and software. So it has a really, really great environment. So guess what? The core library, the core extension exists. And then you have lots of extensions to go for. You have, ex you have libraries for everything, OK? So, but this one is core because remember, this started out as graphic designers wanting to program. So, what graphic designers do? PDFs. So, PDF. Okay. PDF export. So, PDF library works like this. Every library works like this. So, the processing is like a car, it does the basic thing, it runs. But sometimes you want to get it more space in the trunk. So, you get an. Uh, uh, an extension to the car <laughs> that you pull. <laughs> uh, OK, no sense there's English. Um, so you, you add something to the program that it's not prepared to do uh, in, in score. So you actually start the program by saying, OK, this program will import extra functions, new code, new possibilities from the library processing PDF. So you just copy this line. And you put it in the beginning of the program. Extend program function functionality with libraries. Okay. So you just import new possibilities into the code. So now the computer says, okay, you want to do basic? Oh, no, no, I want to do more. So it goes and fetches more stuff and it adds. So the program gets bigger. So it's like collecting stuff. But it gets bigger, it gets bigger and stronger. But it gets bigger. You have to be aware of this. Uh, and now you have to say, OK, this one kind of generates PDFs by its own, multiple pages, single frame with screen. Ah, this one. Yeah, well, we have to read, OK? But I'm going. I'm going fast. What you should do, you should read and say, this one does this, this one does that. So this method says, OK, I, you draw it normally. But when you want to start recording, you just say, start recording the graphics. So ah, if I say, when you start saving PDF, begin recording. So OK. So when you start recording, if save PDF equals true or it's a Boolean, if it's true, then begin record. And guess what? OK. It's going to save on the sketch folder. OK. It's going to save over here. Or you can say export flash trucetiles, and it will export into a export folder. So if it's saved PDF equals true, begin record. OK. And don't forget that in the end, you have to stop recording. Because it has to build a page and tell the PDF the PDF now closes. One page, stop. Otherwise, it will be corrupt PDF. So no loop. Before no loop, I'll just say if 
data if PDF equals true. It's the same as saying save PDF, true or false. Top records, and guess what? Save PDF equals false. Because you have to be aware of this, you have to turn down the, the saving function. So if this is done, you just have to say, well, true loop. You have to just loop it. Well, it's not really good right now. There's a logic program the problem here. Right? So you just go, okay, when you're ready to save, just press S. It will do the loop again. It's stupid, I know. Uh, I cannot correct it uh, right now, <laughs> it's fast. Uh, but you just go this, it does loop. And if you go to the sketch folder, you actually have an export with a PDF a vector file. So right now, it's really cool to see the, the graphics. Now this one's touch, okay? So the, pro the only problem here is that it's RGB values, but then you can find a replace in Illustrator and switch it to SMIC values or place it in, in design and, and change it. If you wanna do SMIC values, you should always learn to do drawbots, but okay. Uh, that's it. I'm sorry. Eu sei que te perdi. <risos> no final do draw. Ok. Isto não ficou muito bem, mas ok. Agora estou arrependido ali de uma coisa que fiz. Era mais fácil corrigir. Interessa. Ah, o... If save PDF... Just say the, the file name. There's a trick also you can actually say you want to save files and you don't want to re replace them, just do kernel. And it uses the frame number to, to save the PDF. You can actually run this several times. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and just saves 10 files. Quem é que está a perguntar? Uh, Roberto, Roberto, Roberto. Uh, is it saved, Pedro? The last sketch. Uh, yeah, don't worry. I'll, I'll save the sketch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> save the sketch. And I'll, I'll send you the, the commented sketches later, okay? Uh, I'm breaking down the... Well, sorry. Uh, I'll break this down into the, into the conditions and then into the, the key pressed and then into the ex export and I'll comment to the files like I did in the previous workshops. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you for reminding me, but I'm kind of stressed about the time. <laughs> um, once again, not everything was possible to do in the program. Uh, I had the, the arrays to go through it. So we had, uh, we, we can actually use a trick um, once you go down the rabbit hole of of saving all the conditional data. And we can preload, um, we can generate the, 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 the trick is to generate the, the procedural graphics as data and then draw it. Because when you want to save the PDF, you want to draw the thing that was previously saved and not the new thing. Uh, but yeah, well, I guess I will have to invite you to come here or to take a class with us. Like some of our, the colleagues that are here will have or like Antonio already did and learn the rest of it from us. Uh, but yeah, well, this is what was possible. I hope you liked it. Quite a speed, Klaus said. Yeah, well, sorry. Uh, trying to run through the, the fundamentals. Usually I don't do this as fast, but thank you, thank you. I hope you had fun. And this is being recorded. Uh, Antonio is recording it and, and, and we'll send it to you later for you to review it. And well, I don't know. Maybe you can, I, I will ask you if you do something with this code. Uh, maybe I'll ask you to just, I can just send you the code via the save sketch, show sketch folder. I can just drop the sketch. The fun of this is that this is just a text file. Uh, and I just can dro just drop it here and you can have it. It's not very well commented. If you, if you, if you manage to do something with this code, uh, thank you, Pedro, obrigado. Um, if you manage to do something with this code, just change the tile, do something and, and send a print screen to me. I would love just to 
to show the print screen on the, on the processing community, they're saying, well, two hours, three hours of processing and our amazing participants did this. And they're fantastic. It was really amazing. Okay, so thank you, Martina. Thank you for being here. And thank you for, thank you all for being here. And so, I know I've lost some of you along the way. It's always like this, but well, I guess that's it. Adventures of doing fast workshops. Obrigado, Nuno. Obrigado, Fatini. Thank you. So I guess we'll close now and I will invite you all to be on the next workshops. Next week we'll have Media Pipe. I'm curious about that one. It's a media, it's an artificial language uh, library, uh, artificial intelligence library with Python. I have no clue how it works. I'm gonna be a student from Cobalt, but that's gonna do it. And I invite you to be here. Uh, and we'll have uh, Adobe Aero and we'll have Grasshopper. And then on the 14th of February, we'll have the final conference that I'll invite you to join us or to see the stream also. So I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you do something. And I hope to see you again someday. <laughs> the next workshops. Obrigado, Martina. See you also. Obrigado, Bruno. Obrigado, Mariana. Obrigado, António, por estar aqui a fazer aqui os bastidores. Obrigado, Ana, Pedro, Jackie.